Um, welcome everybody to the October 16th meeting of the select, Reading Select Board. Uh, we're now in session. I wanted to point out uh, a couple of, we, tonight we have another full agenda and I just wanted to list some of the things that we'll be going over. First week after uh, liaison reports and town manager report, we have um, a badge pinning ceremony for five new police officers uh, in Reading. Uh, then we have a, a brief item to what I hope will be to, uh, to wrap up the discussion regarding who's responsible for the permanent permit enforcement at Lincoln Prescott site. And then finally, uh, the, probably the biggest, longest item will be a public hearing on tax classification, followed by select board votes on a minimal, a minimum residential tax factor and other tax related decisions. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a, a review of select board goals and look at next meeting's, meeting's agenda. Um, so before we go to liaison reports, I did I, I did want to make a brief statement about the swastikas <coughs> that were found uh, recently in the schools. Um, this is, as we know, an ongoing problem in town uh, that the schools, select board, police, and community groups are working hard to address. In that spirit, I must once again emphasize that the intent of the person or persons who drew the swastikas does not matter, but the harmful impact <coughs> of what they drew does. Um, together, we can support those most affected by these acts and continue to communicate that the swastika does not represent the values of our community. And uh, as an addendum to that statement, the board received an email from a member of RED in town, and uh, I'll ask the board to discuss that email uh, under the open session portion of the meeting uh, in a minute. So without further ado, uh, I will turn over to John this time for the sure. liaison reports. Um, and, yeah. Well, in keeping with the theme, um, let's talk about public safety. Um, where I'm a liaison. Um, we're in the middle right now, um, as many of the people in the room know, of the Citizens uh, Police Academy. Um, it's, it's something that I think is a fabulous part of community policing that's going on in our town. We're, at, um, we're actually at week five of a nine-week um, academy, and um, currently there's 30 participants, which I think is awesome. Ultimately, it'll include a, a ride-along, and that'll be conducted by the field training officers. And just in general, I mean, that piece of community policing, I think, is really important. And um, I'm glad we're doing it. Um, kind of on the heels of that, um, starting in November, we'll, the RAD program will be reinstituted again. That's, you know, under sponsorship from the Young Women's mm -hmm. uh, Club. And so that'll be... That'll be taken off, I think, November 5th. So just a little update, you know, on the on the police side of public safety. We've heard a lot about the RAD program. Yep. It's pretty good. Um, <coughs> Vanessa, thanks, John. Yep. Uh, so I, like I think several of the members here, attended a financial forum uh, last week um, that focused on the <coughs> revenue and expenses for 2018. Um, along with uh, an update on the free cash balance and projected revenue for fiscal year 19. And there was an extensive discussion on capital projects. That meeting took place on the 10th, if you want to check that out. Um, okay. Uh, so if you'd like to hear more about that, it goes into great detail. You can check it out on the RCTV channel on YouTube. Um, again, October 10th is when that took place. Uh, and um, I have more information on the RED event, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, Eric, my turn. Um, you folks will remember at our last meeting, we issued a proclamation to honor um, five young ladies in Troop 73709 um, in completing their silver 
Award for the Girl Scouts. Um, on Sunday, I had the honor of actually attending their award ceremony, and it was the first, um, you know, John, you and I have probably done dozens of, of Eagle Scout um, yep. uh, awards, but this is the first Girl Scout um, award ceremony that I had ever attended, and I gotta say that I was completely blown away by just the the poise and the and the work that these five young ladies accomplished. Um, and Bob, I, I um, if you want to put that on, you want to start with the uh, work. With the work, yes. So, and I think there's a couple of the young, the young ladies that are, yeah. Okay, great. So, um, and this is for the folks at home. So, the, um, just to, to to summarize, the project that um, that the girls decided to work on that there's a there's a, a, trend, um, a, a transitional housing uh, shelter in Lawrence that that houses uh, homeless women and and their children and. Um, what the girls took on was a project to basically um, to outfit the library, the laundry room, the playroom, and the waiting area with furnishings, books, toys. Um, and so what Bob has on the screen is sort of the before and the after pictures. Um, and you can just see how stark it kind of looked on the left and on the right, all the work that the, that the girls did. They raised all the money on their own. Um, so when you folks are at the Stop and Shop or at Market Basket um, and some young uh, Girl Scout asks you to buy a box of Girl Scout cookies, this is the kind of stuff that it funds. Um, it took them a number of months to do, um, and um, what was really interesting about the project is that unlike an Eagle Scout award where, where a young man picks a project and works on it on his own, this was a group effort by the five girls um, and that they had to work together um, to do it. And so they've achieved their silver award. The next step up is the gold. Um, I sort of challenged them all to, I, I want to go to as many silver and gold award ceremonies for the girls as we attend for the boys because the, the amount of work that they did was tremendous. Um, and the impact will be incredibly long lasting. So again, I want to I want to honor, um, uh, and I know there's a couple of the young ladies are here, but Lindsey Branga, Ashley Brzezinski, Charlotte Collins, Julia Delaney, and Jackie Donato, um, uh, D, D Donato, uh, were the five young ladies that participated in that. And, and I think that we all owe them a debt of gratitude and honor. So girls, if you want to stand up and just take a bow. <laughs> And there's a picture of, uh, of the girls getting their awards. Um, Representative Jones was there as well to honor the girls with um, uh, proclamations from the state. So um, really, it's, it's, it's a tremendous amount of work, and you really are the best that we have to offer. So I want to thank you personally for that, and I'm sure the town does as well. So thank you. Um, last night, I attended um, a meeting of the Reading Cultural uh, Council. Um, it's the first time uh, I'm the liaison to that. Um, and as, as you recall, the, the Reading Cultural Council is the group that distributes uh, award money that's awarded by the, by the Mass Cultural Council. I gotta leave the room. Explain why. Because uh, uh, my wife and I are involved in one of their grants, and I've always left. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be 15 seconds, and there wasn't anything about money, but you that's, good. You that's can, fine. Okay. So essentially, um, uh, because of the burgeoning arts movement in town, so many different organizations, they reported that there was a record number of applications received, uh, well over 20, totaling over $19,000 of requests. The state finances or funds um, what they give, they're going to have to give out $7,500 on $19,000 worth of requests. So basically, it's, they're going to be able to only fund a third of what's been asked for. Um, the process of applications ended. Over the next couple of months, they're going to deliberate and sort of try to parcel out that $7,500 as best as, as, uh, as they can. Um, a couple of things that um, they wanted uh, us to know is that they reminded me it's been a while since they actually came and presented what they do to the select board. So, Mr. Chair, I, I took it upon myself to invite them. Good. Um, probably, I think the best time would be sometime in January. That'll be after they've actually given the award so they can actually comment on some of the groups that are going to get funded <coughs> and financed. They also wanted me to remind folks that um, uh, there's a, it's, a, it's, an or, it's a board 
a commission of seven people. There are two openings for associate members that are currently unfilled. So if there's anybody out there that really loves the arts, that really wants to get involved um, and help you know, finance some of these things, um, please apply uh, to Town Hall um, for an associate member position. It's a really great group of people that we'll all see in January. And, final, and lastly, um, I wanted to just remind folks tomorrow um, at 7 o'clock at the, li not, it's the, the real library, not the school library, <laughs> I would get confused. Um, we're going to have a meeting, of uh, an economic development meeting, where we're going to update the projects, but also sort of talk about the next steps. Um, about downtown parking will be a big piece of it. Some of the wayfinding, it'll be a participatory and inclusive kind of thing. We, I know the business community is all out there waiting on bated breath uh, about the tax classification thing. I would also hope that they would come for that because it does, um, it does obviously impact the downtown uh, business. And as part of that, I also want to report, Bob may want to want to just highlight this um, because it kind of flew under the radar. Um, Reading last week, um, Karen Polito, the governor, was in Melrose and handed out awards for 19 different uh, cities and towns for housing choice awards, um, of which Reading was, was one of 19 cities and towns that got an award. And basically, it was a planning award. And, uh, and for really, for us to do the next steps um, in um, uh, not, the, not the downtown, but also down by walk, you know, the Walker's Brook area. So we can really study that as sort of the next level of our economic development. Um, they were very keen to point out that Reading has done the economic development the right way. We've included neighbors. Um, we've, we've had far-reaching impact. We've met our affordable housing goal. We make it as a commitment. And we've done and we've planned strategically, um, thoughtfully, um, and a targeted way. And so um, that is a $50,000 grant that will help finance. Bob, you may want to talk where Gene is here to talk about what that's going to do. But that's really an honor that, that very few cities and towns even got a sniff of, and Reading was awarded and highlighted. So I wanted just to thank the staff for that. But it's also, um, it's also a commitment that this board and, and, and past boards have taken about how to do economic development in town, how to expand the 40R, how to make the downtown vibrant. And that's something that I think we all um, real, I'm really excited about the next steps, but we got, we got thanked for the work that we did. So that's all I have. Excellent. Thank you. Dan? Okay. I'm pleased to re uh, report that the cable uh, uh, renewal team that is uh, studying the renewal of the Comcast uh, contract has completed its work. Uh, that team included, uh, was headed up by uh, Matt Cornelis and uh, Jane Miller uh, from the town staff, uh, Jake McAleer. Phil Rush Rushworth, RCTV, myself as the uh, Board of Selectmen, Re Select Board Representative, uh, Gail Dowd from the School Department, Kevin Farilla, IT, and Julian Carr, Eric Russell, uh, Town Council Representative. So that work has culminated. Uh, there is a draft uh, con contract that will be coming before this board in two weeks on the 30th. It will be a formal public hearing. It's been advertised. Uh, and the board will be asked to approve that uh, that agreement next time. So uh, a lot of good work done by that team. Uh, a lot of solid work. Uh, let's see. Uh, Barry and I meeting as the subcommittee on the renewal of the town manager's contract have held several meetings with Bob. Uh, we are ready to bring uh, a, a proposed contract for renewal to the board. Uh, Bob. We, we essentially have agreed on the draft of that this morning. Uh, I would like that to happen on the 30th, if at all possible. It's something we, we should move forward with uh, yeah, as, as soon as we things. can. Yeah, we, we would actually like to strongly suggest yeah, that we, we do it's that. For a lot of variety of reasons, right. it's important to get this done. So, But you'll have an opportunity to see uh, you know, the old versus the, the changes in the contract mm -hmm. with marked changes, the, the new contract which will include monetary uh, reimbursement mm -hmm. for the duration of the contract. And uh, the board can uh, dispense with it as they see fit. Okay. Um, one other thing, Andy, you didn't mention it, but uh, following the Board of Health meeting oh. last night, uh, do, do you want to announce it? No. Uh, well, I was we there. It's so important I, that we yeah, probably I, I, get this I, out. I, I, uh, well, actually, I haven't given my report yet. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll let you do it. it. I'll let you do it. So that, that's really all I had. Okay, great. Um, so liaison reports for for me. I attended a board of health meeting last evening. Highlights include uh, um, 
three things, uh, well, more than that, but the highlights really. A pest control company is now treating Washington Park for rats. Um, the bait uh, containing rat poison is located in locks, locked boxes um, on the, in the park. Um, the town has hired a part-time public <coughs> health nurse. And uh, lastly, after the meeting, the chair informed the other, other board members and myself that he needs to resign from the board of health effective October 20th. <coughs> so I, I thank John for his service. I worked with him uh, a couple of years ago on the Board of Health. Um, I thanked him for his service in the town. So we need to, uh, we have a couple of empty spots on the Board of Health. Now one full member and also an associate member, I believe. Uh, last week I attended an HRAC meeting uh, Three points from this meeting, the Deputy Chief of Police reported that a second resource officer is now serving in the middle schools, and um, this is one of the commitments we, we made if the override passed, which it did. We have a resource officer now serving both Parker and um, um, Coolidge. Yeah, my kids didn't go to that one, so I was. Um, and, f and then um, two, uh, Red, uh, Reading Embraces Diversity is a non-governmental group. They reported they were, they were sponsoring an event focused on ballot, ballot question number three, and that it, it event is being held at the library and going on as we speak. So I accuse them of trying to steal our thunder. Um, finally, the uh, Human Relations Advisory Committee, or HREC, voted yes, uh, to support a yes vote on question three. And they, furthermore, they voted to advise their, the, the select board uh, to also support a, a yes vote on question three. Um, so the, the board will discuss the advice of HRAC at our next meeting on October 30th. This evening we have another full agenda. Items include, yeah, yeah. Um, items, items include a badge pinning ceremony for five new officers. No, I've already read this. Sorry. Um, all over to um, public comment first, um, as per the agenda. How many in in the room would like to make a public comment? Okay, a uh, couple, great. Um, so, uh, say your name, address the chair. Nancy, Dr. Pearl Street, I really wanted to just um, address the 8 p.m. agenda on the split tax rate. I think it's very interesting that tomorrow's meeting is the developmental, for the downtown economic development, because I'm not quite sure how a split tax rate makes Reading a business destination. Um, my concern is that this is going to have an adverse effect on Reading taxpayers. Um, anyone who thinks that Reading businesses don't do their fair share, you only have to look at who supports Reading sports, the arts, the nonprofits. I've been soliciting for the past year for Reading 375, and I will tell you there are businesses that are operating just on the margin. You can't have it both ways. You cannot ask our businesses to support this town and then have more taxes. Barry, do you recognize this? This is Friends of Ready Football. I bought you this. Uh, Nancy, are you addressing Nancy, me? Or yes, you should be addressing sorry, the chair. Yeah. Yeah, the chair. I, I don't recognize that, I'm sorry. The Friends of Ready Football. Some of these businesses aren't even in town anymore. Mm -hmm. They've closed. I'd like to know out of our <coughs> stock, how many empty storefronts are there? How many empty businesses? You're looking to attract businesses. This is what we call penny wise pound foolish. So I really ask you to consider the adverse effect this is going to have on ready residents. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And, and we will have a hearing on that uh, later on. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, I don't think it was mentioned, but it's sort of in regards 
regard to the recent link graffiti. Uh, the swastika is found in the middle school, I believe. Yeah, you should state okay. your your name uh, and and address. Betty Lieberman. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So there was, in case anyone doesn't know, there was some other um, graffiti swastika found um, in the middle school science room. Um, I, I'm not sure if it was brought up at this meeting, but um, I think we should possibly move towards a bigger. Um, town-wide show of support, like, not, you know, obviously not support for this photography, but for support of a more, you know, diverse community. Um, yeah, because clearly the previous actions might not have been working so well if there was a lot of so. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for speaking. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Um, Anne Landria, to, to call, uh, I'm from Center Ave, and I'm here today um, in my capacity as a volunteer with Reading Embraces Diversity, and to follow up a little bit on what um, Maddie raised, and uh, just to follow up on an email I sent to the board earlier today. Um, I, Reading Embraces Diversity, would like to hold a rally in support of standing in solidarity with uh, the community in Reading and opposing um, the anti-Semitic uh, acts that we have seen in our community. Um, Reading Embraces Diversity would very much welcome the support and, spon and joint sponsorship of the town of Reading or the Select Board. I'm not sure what that would look like, um, but we would very much be interested in partnering with the Select Board, with the town of Reading, and with any other stakeholders or community organizations. And it's in Reading so that this is uh, both a, a town response, like I think as I've heard Barry talk about before, the big T, but also a, the little T. So both uh, a response from the government and the community as, uh, as a whole. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and is there a rally planned for the common? I, I, I think yes, th uh, sun, this coming Sunday at um, Most It's loosely organized at this point in time and certainly um, you know, any kind of program or agenda, if the, if the town is interested in joint sponsoring, we can work together in, in developing that. So, so that, um, we'll discuss your email under, um, after the town manager's, manager's report. Uh, an open session for top, topics not reasonably um, foreseen 48 hours in advance. Um, so, um, any other public comment? Okay, uh, Bob, town manager. Uh, thank you, I'll try to be quick, I have a long list. Um, first, congratulations to uh, finance and technology staff. We got a $45,000 grant for the Community Compact Cabinet's IT program. A quote from the Lieutenant Governor, competition was intense. Our application was chosen because it met the overarching goal of driving innovation and transformation at the local level via uh, technology, investment in technology. So congratulations for that. Bob, are there any other grants that are out there? But we're on a roll. We haven't missed too many, <laughs> knock on wood. Uh, Barry has mentioned the Housing and Economic Development Grant. Um, that was a really impressive um, ceremony, if you will, over in, um, in Melrose. Um, I was particularly interested in the remarks by the Executive Director of Mass Housing Finance Agency, Crystal Cornegay. Um, so Nate, sorry. Um, she gave a nice story about uh, this is really our reward for the 19 communities that are doing it right, and that um, it's not meant as a punishment for the other 340 communities, but they ought to do more like the things that we do. So I, I thought those were words uh, certainly well received, and certainly your right staff deserves a lot of credit. Um, this is not something you sit down and achieve in one day or one week. It takes actually several years to get here, so congratulations on that. Um, the high school graffiti incident has been mentioned. I met with the superintendent yesterday, and just to round out the school's response, uh, yesterday in the high school, uh, several, if not every, uh, history teacher brought this up in their history class and provided more background once again. It's a new school year, so perhaps the students hadn't heard the message from the prior year. Um, they've heard it by now. Um, I wanted to mention that the town clerk's office is uh, 
letting us know about early voting. Um, that starts next week on October 22nd and it runs through Friday, November 2nd. There's uh, significantly more information on the website. It's during town halls, normal business hours in general. And you can still register a vote um, through October 17th, which is coming up very quickly this week. And absentee ballots um, are available. Um, tomorrow I'm attending a Northeast Metro Regional Vogue School presentation on their building renovation. It's a, it's a required meeting by the MSBA. Just to put it back on the agenda that sometime in the next two or three years, there's a multi-hundred million dollar project that we will be paying for a portion of. Uh, it's paid by enrollment. Our enrollment is about one and a half percent. We'll see how that all shakes out. It's also spread over a long amount of time. Um, the MSBA reimbursement for the Vogue School is very high. It's uh, somewhere north of 70%, so the actual cost of the participants will be uh, comparatively low. Um, I wanted to mention that on Saturday, uh, Matt and I attended an Arch Reading meeting. It was shortened by rain, but there were some party souls there. Um, they thanked all the residents that did show up. Um, they're very appreciative. Uh, they're thinking next year they might try to schedule it in July. So when it rains, it's at least a little bit warmer. It was a little chilly up there. Um, and lastly, and, and I'll write a little more about this for your next agenda, but there is an important um, agenda item on for next week. It's called Adopt Designer Selection Law. I just want to bring it up because um, the purpose of yesterday's meeting in the schools was for many of us to discuss capital, once again, based on the FinCom's discussion uh, as a follow-up. Um, I'll just say that the, this is a very important first step now that we understand what FinCom's priorities are, that you will be presented something by our procurement expert that's very critical to the school end of the town, especially the school. So I just want to say that you'll read more about it. Um, the next night after your next meeting, the school committee will actually vote on something that's loosely related. Uh, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. So now there's a, a, a piece in the agenda called Open Session for Topics Not Reasonably Anticipated 48 Hours in Advance of the Meeting. Um, the letter from uh, Ann Landry uh, falls into, into that category uh, because it's, it's proposing something that's coming up this Sunday. So, uh, Ann, do you have your email with you, or, or would you like me to read it? I could read it. You'd like me to read it? That would be great. Yes. Sure. Um, it reads, uh, Dear Select Board Members, I am writing to you in my capacity as a member of and volunteer with Reading Embraces Diversity, RED. RED is planning a rally against anti-Semitism this Sunday, October 21st, at noon on the Reading Town Common in response to recent acts of anti-Semitic graffiti and vandalism in our community. We would welcome the joint sponsorship of the Town of Reading and indeed other community organizations and stakeholders in promoting this event. It is our hope that it will, be, it will provide an opportunity for all of us to stand in solidarity with members of Reading's Jewish community in opposition to the acts of hate that continue to be perpetrated in Reading. Would the town of Reading or the select board be willing to jointly sponsor or promote this, advance, uh, this event? Many thanks for your consider consideration, respectfully, and Thanks, Ann. So with that uh, information in front of us, I'd, I'd like to open it up for a discussion on how the board would like to handle <coughs> this matter. Um, yes? So I, I think it's a fabulous idea. Uh, my thanks to Red for organizing it. I plan on attending. I, I hope other members are available too as well. Uh, it was Sunday at noon. Um, in so far as um, co-sponsoring, um, I think as far as advertising, I, I think this is a great venue for that. Um, well, uh, as a co-sponsorship, what did Red Hat envision something um, beyond our participation or, or a vote? How, how can we support it if that is the will of the board? I would certainly be open to conversation about what that would look like if um, you know, on a press release we could mention that the sponsors include Reading and Racist Diversity, the Select Board, or the Town of Reading. Um, if it possibly would like to be included on the town website, something along those lines. Okay. Any money? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so is the big. I'm a, sorry a, to a ask. Zero dollar budget. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, so I'm assuming um, 
deputy chief here? Or? No, he's outside. I'm assuming like permits are fine and we don't yeah, I talked to Ann earlier, no permits are so, right, so there's nothing that we have to do sort of administratively. But, um, I mean Ann, as you know, I, I should just let everybody else know I got back to Ann within minutes of yes. the email saying that I would attend in any capacity, either as a a citizen, mm -hmm. as a Jewish resident of Reading, or as a select board member, or all three. Mm -hmm. So I'm planning on being there. I think it's something that um, if all of us are, all yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll wear three different hats. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's a fine idea for us to basically put our money where our mouth is. And if it means that we endorse this rally, and I, mean, I, I know it's short notice, maybe not all of us mm -hmm. can attend, right. but mm -hmm. you know, e even if you, if we can't attend of other plans because it is short notice for the select board to basically say, you know, we're going to stand up against this, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it and happy to make a motion to that effect. Sure. So, Anyone so, else? So I'd like, oh. Um, the deputy's not in the room, but I know he would ask you to also invite HR. Yeah. Oh, yes, I, I, I've been in communication okay. with Ian as well. And, and, um, as a possible so I make a motion that the select board um, endorse and sponsor the, the rally on Sunday at noon um, uh, against uh, graffiti and um, second try to show up there as, if we if we if time will mm -hmm. um, discussion um, uh, Yes, I, I, I need to get out of the habit of, of, of um, keeping public, I need to get keep public comment within public comment, but I noticed that you had your hand raised and I it missed you at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, uh, uh, Rebecca Lieberman, 50 Pratt Street, I would just want to say that um, not only uh, it, it's wonderful that the site board is going to endorse this and that Red is, um, is organizing this, it would be great if we could get some email and phone blasts from the town. I would really appreciate it because if then the town is really behind it, get some good advertising because if two people show up, yep. you have to have the impact. Thank you. So that reminds me, if I could make a small amendment to your, uh, and that would be that the, the town also, or the, the board town, also um, promote the event. And I, I don't know, you know, maybe uh, have it, you know, well, have if we had a Facebook page, that would yep. be really easy. <laughs> so, but we do have, we have a town website that, yeah, I know. We have a town website that we can put it up on. Um, sure. Yep. Yeah, sure. So, um, why don't we deal with the motion first, and then we can decide the logistics. Yeah, we just have to discuss the amendment. What was, what, what was the amendment? The amendment was to also <coughs> promote. You said, I think. Oh, okay. yeah, promote. yeah. I just said, wanted to add promote and promote. So, any any discussions on that? It's fine. Um, yeah. So, Bob, that's fine. We can. Yeah. Do, yeah. I'll leave it up to the communications experts on the different okay. channels. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they can work with the red folks or with Ann on just sort of yeah. all the yeah. wins. Yeah. Okay. So you you, uh, you you allow them. I, I, yeah, I, I friendly, amendment. Friend, friendly amendment. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, then uh, all in favor of um, Barry's motion amended. All right. Look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in. Now. Um, Apologize that we're a little late, guys. Um, not too bad. Not, not too bad. <coughs> so tonight we have the honor of hosting a ceremonial badge pinning of five new police officers. Two of the officers were hired as a result of the successful override last April, and three are filling vacancies created by retirement. The ceremony formally introduces the officers to the select board and to Reading residents' inhabitants. 
So with that, I now turn the floor over to Deputy Chief Clark, who's not in the room. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a feeling he'll be here soon. Oh, so folks that yeah, need to some, come in here. Yeah, there's some more seats too. Yeah. Can have there's more seats up front if you'd like to take them. Or people can stand up here. Yeah. You're welcome to stand or sit up. Yeah. Come on in, come on in. None of us fight. Hello again. Turn the floor over to. Oh, I, I read my okay. my piece. Sorry. Thank you. I uh, just want to thank the uh, select board for having us here tonight. As most of you know, this is a very, very special moment for the officers and their families. It's uh, badge pinning goes up through their careers as they move up in ranks. A new badge gets put on. It basically the accumulation of a lot of hard work, training, and um, getting there. And the badge, the symbol of all that. And it's nice for us to have a chance to introduce the new officers to the town and to the board. Um, I do have a cheat sheet, just because there's a lot of them tonight. So as I'm sure Andy said, um, we hired eight new police officers this year. We have five of the eight. Uh, three of them are a result of retirements, two are a result of the override, and we have three more currently in the academy. One will be graduating in November, and two will be graduating in February from the academy for us. So, see you. First, I'd like to introduce Officer Stephen Pelland. Uh, Stephen is a Reading resident, grew up here in town, graduated from Austin Prep in 2013. He graduated in 2017 from Merrimack College with a bachelor's degree in criminology. He attended the MBTA Police Academy in Quincy starting in March, he just graduated uh, recently in September, and is on what we call field training right now. After they graduate six months <laughs> along the academy, they do work with certified field training officers for 14 weeks to learn, take the general knowledge they have, and specifically bring it to running. And he's currently in that phase right now, and he'll be on the street on his own, on the streets um, in November. Right now, he's assigned to a field training officer. He's going to be pinned tonight by his mother, Lisa Green, and father, Stephen Pellin. They'll come up, please. So to the board, I'd like to officially um, recognize Officer uh, Stephen Pellin. Hi, guys. Appreciate it. Hey. Congratulations, Stephen. Huh? Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's okay. It's right now. Great. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Congratulations. Congratulations. Right, next up, Honey God. Orders. 
Austin Peoples graduated from uh, Mass Phenomenon at Rachel High School in June of 2009. Graduated from Salem State University with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice in 2016. And he attended the Academy with Stephen Pellin, the MBT Academy in Quincy in March, just graduated in September, and is currently on field training as well. Uh, previously, he worked for the Essex Police Department as a reserve police officer for five years. And he's being pinned tonight by his father, retired Reading Police Officer Paul, Pe there you are, Paul Peebles. Yep. God, present home. Graciali uh, graduated Saugus High School in 2008. He has his bachelor's degree from Salem State University in 2018. Um, he graduated from the 161st New Hampshire Police Academy. Josh was an excellent police officer for the past five years, and we uh, applied to the state for an exemption. They accepted the New Hampshire Academy. His first part of training was taking Massachusetts law tests. Once he passed all those, we could put him on the street. So we were lucky enough that he actually didn't have to go through the academy again, and we were to actually put him on the road in July to do the field training. So he's actually on the road um, on his own now working and protecting the streets. And it's a big help to have us to, there's a lot of eight hires, in, uh, sorry, eight new hires this year. It's great for us to have somebody with some actual law enforcement experience to kind of help out and guide the way with a lot of the younger officers we have on now. And he's going to be pinned by his girlfriend, Alexandra Thanopoulos. Did I say it right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Oh my God, Thank you, sir. Next up, we have uh, Austin Brennan McEachran. Brennan graduated uh, Brooklyn Memorial High School in 2009. At the University of Massachusetts Lowell, he graduated in 2013 with a major in criminal justice with a concentration um, in policing and a minor in psychology. He has also, we left out, he was actually academy trained. He was a reserve police officer with the Boricca Police Departments and went to the Reading Police Academy in 2017. So again, we were able to hire him and put him right on the road right after field training, so he's on the road with us right now. And he's gonna be pinned by his girlfriend, um, Jacqueline Dow. studies. Not your typical CDA degree, but no difference, always good to have. He also attended the Reading Police Academy in 2016 and came lucky enough again to get hired with already academy training as he worked as a special police officer in Burlington and in Stowe. And um, again, he was able to come on the road right away in July, just go through field training, and he's on the road right now um, helping protect the streets. And he's being pinned by his girlfriend, Ashley Phoenix.
Honor God, present home. And again, I would just like to thank the board. I know you have a very busy agenda, um, and I appreciate you taking your time to let us come our up pleasure. here. Yep. You know, we said before, our, it's a very pleasure. special moment for all of us, and I just wanted to thank you for allowing us to do this again. You're welcome. Thank and you. Deputy Chief, and not to put you on the spot, but nope. to put you on the spot, um, could you just, you relate to me the advantage advantages that Reading will receive with these new police officers. Absolutely. Do you want to address that this yeah. evening? <coughs> Absolutely. So our hope is, it's not a hope, but what will be happening is we've been short for a while now, and we've been become a reactive police department. We've had to react to crimes, react to cost of service, because we didn't have the uh, officers to be proactive. With these new officers, we've got to be back to proactive policing. Um, letting the public know, you are going to see an increase, and you should have already seen now, of traffic enforcement. That's our biggest priority, and you're going to see people um, else out there pulling over more cars. It's not about writing tickets, it's about educating the public and slowing people down, but we're going to go out there being a lot more aggressive with traffic enforcement. And come springtime, we're going to see walking beats back on the square, nice. and the officers back on the mountain bikes in the park areas in the woods, and we're going back to a proactive police department, and these officers give us that ability to start going from reactive back into proactive policing, and again, serving the community at a higher level that we haven't been able to do for the past couple of years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uniform personnel, attention, present palms. Their picture yes. taken. Yes, uh, we'll take a two minute break uh, so people can exit and um, also. <laughs>
Welcome back, folks. Um, the, the next agenda item uh, should be brief. Um, at, la at the last meeting, I, I posed the question, who's responsible for enforcing ZBA's, uh, the ZBA permit for the Lincoln Prescott 40B construction site? And um, that question remains. So the goal of this brief agenda item is first to offer the opportunity to the board to give impressions of the information that was provided last week. Um, and then, then we'll turn to the town manager and get uh, clarification on, on who is it in the compliance enforcement world. So uh, anyone care to, Vanessa? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so um, I, this was a brief discussion that we had last week, but I was concerned because um, uh, it was said that a private citizen was the eyes and ears on permit enforcement. Um, and I'm concerned that we're opening up ourselves up to, to issues of liability if we say that a resident is acting in an official capacity um, on behalf of the town. Um, so that, that was the implication that was given when it was mentioned who sure was responsible that, for enforcing. Okay. I'm not sure um, about that either. So I, my hope, and I don't think we need to spend a ton of time on it, is just to convey to residents and to clarify for the board um, who within the town is responsible for permit enforcement. Well, that's spelled out very clearly. Uh, it's yes, the building inspector. Right, uh, right. But that wasn't what was conveyed at the last meeting. So it's really just for point of clarification as far as I'm concerned. Um, I reviewed the tape just to make sure um, I was right. And um, we were told that a resident was uh, to be our eyes and ears on the site and rely on her to report in problems. And I, I just don't want to give the impression that Reading Town government doesn't enforce our permits. We do. Um, and, um, and, and we don't ask citizens to, to do that for us. Barry. Um, I was at that meeting, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recall any one of us or anybody from the town that, mm -hmm. that basically abrogated the responsibility of permit enforcement to a resident. Um, I think in the same way you would expect if you're driving down your street and you hit a pothole, that you stop your car, you, 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 you take your C-Click Fix app, which I'm sure everybody has on their phone, you take a picture of it and you send it to the town hall and it's, it's appropriately dealt with. I, I think the notion that that we would think that a resident has the responsibility of enforcement, I, I don't think was ever said, I don't think it ever was implicated. And, you know, I think all of us need to be vigilant if, you know, if you see something, call it in. But that's not the only way that stuff is gonna get, you know, reported that, you know, everyone else is sort of um, laying down their responsibility. So if, if that was conveyed, it was clearly a misunderstanding of anything, because I don't recall anybody staff or any of us saying well it's your problem um, I, and if that was if that was conveyed then it was in error um, I'll, I'll be clear that is not what I'm implying at all just that simply the statement was made was made that we've asked a resident to be our eyes and ears on the site That's and different. rely on her to That's report. Not that is, exactly um, so that is not what I'm saying. It just, um, and I and I do not, and I'm in favor of uh, the public calling in complaints on certain matters, um, but I am reluctant for the town to ask a resident to um, be our eyes and ears. Uh, anyway, any other, I, I'd like not to belabor this point, no, I, I think it's honestly just a point of clarification so that right. should the residents have questions, they're clear on the procedure, which well, isn't something we just didn't get to last. The residents should have a single point of contact yeah. if possible. That, that's a big help. Uh, maybe a backup person. The, yeah. I believe they do have such a person. And then that person should have someone they in turn contact, either yourself or yeah. a member yeah. of town staff. Anyone can, right. you know, as John said, 
you know, anyone can contact us at any point in time if they have uh, concerns about the permit. And, and, and as uh, I think everybody knows, uh, that project at uh, Lincoln and Prescott is going through a transitional state. I don't know if the pour has happened now, but yeah. a lot of vehicles have been temporarily moved off that site. Uh, the police can only enforce the parking restrictions per the signs on the street. Yeah. In other words, after 10.30 a.m., anyone could park there. Yeah, the, the they, police are they, they responsible. Can't, they can't yeah. ticket people for, and I'm not sure the building inspector can walk up to a van and figure out whose van that is, <laughs> per se. It, maybe that's a little easier. Yeah, I mean, that's beyond the scope yeah. of, of yeah. what I, I just wanted to clarify uh, or point out that that, okay. that sort of thing makes me nervous. Um, and it kind of yes. Um, just to care, build on what Dan said, um, I think you're right as far as police enforcement goes. Right. Specific to this particular project, though, within the permit, the zoning permit by the ZBA, there are certain agreements that they reached regarding parking. Yeah, I know that. Separate from right. Right. standard. But it would have to be the building inspector enforcing so, those aspects, right. I'm assisted gonna, by staff. Yeah, yeah. I'm going right. to yeah. try to bring this back right. um, and let let Bob clarify um, who's. I think Dan said it. The person responsible for uh, compliance checks and enforcement um, on the ZBA permits is? It's more complicated than that. Oh, stop it. Yes, it is. Um, a member of the board two weeks ago suggested that it was only a few minutes away and why couldn't town staff just go down there? Of course town staff can, but we have to know a reason to go down there right. unless we just park ourselves mm -hmm. down there all day. So the eyes and ears part is very important. It's up to the community to police itself, if you will. If they need our assistance, they have to tell us. That's, that's with traffic, with rats, with anything that's going on. Uh, the police and town staff cannot be in every part of this town. And we rely on residents very much to do our job. Yeah. So I invited uh, three people tonight, as I mentioned, to Andy, uh, Gene, um, uh, Matt Zucker, and yeah. uh, Dave Clark. If you had any questions, I wasn't sure the kind of questions you're going to answer. But um, you know, in any project, uh, never mind the disruptions, there are different authorities that engage in different aspects. Um, as Jean did mention two weeks ago, we have shut this project down. The building inspector has the legal right to do that, right. and at one point the building inspector did that. Um, we have to walk a very fine line be be between being proactively interested in economic development and sending a chilling message to the developers, and that doesn't mean we ignore resident safety. But as our main contact has explained in emails that I've seen, um, you know, some of these complaints are quote unquote a nuisance and the resident understands that public safety and emergencies comes first, and obviously that's logical. Um, but th that doesn't mean that the town's not interested in right. the uh, inconveniences and the, and the violations of terms. Um, but as a practical matter, we just can't be everywhere. So yes, the building inspector is one of the enforcement authorities, and yes, the police department is another, depending on the situation. Um, some things that were reported were police department issues over the last couple of weeks. Right, um, but my, just to bring us back, the, my, the question was, who's responsible for the permit itself? And, and I believe Dan answered it that, it, that it's the building inspector. It's the building inspector, unless so. it's a police issue. If it's parking, it could be a police issue. Right. Uh, I, I understand the police have their job to do, um, yeah. but but it's it's um, it's the building inspector's responsibility to um, make sure that the or try to make sure that the permit is uh, is complied with. Well, well, again, I'll repeat my answer. Yes, on most of it, but not on all of it. Sometimes it's a police issue, and the police are the only agency that can enforce. Of the permit? Of a condition of the permit that might relate to, for instance, parking. All right. Yes. But they work very closely. It's not like they never talk to uh, Of course. Of course. So, well, more generally, not necessarily specific to this particular project, but how do we confirm compliance with these contracts? So you know, if, if something sort of egregious is happening, and again, not specific to this one, but we have numerous developments on the horizon, um, and a resident notices something that's concerning or safety related, they report it. But for ongoing smaller um, enforcement, like 
parking on the street when a, a ZBA permit has said specifically that they're not supposed to do that. How are those kind of issues, I don't use the word policed because that implies strictly the police, but how are they managed by the town? Um, we receive information in a variety of ways. Could be residents, could be staff, could be staff that's unrelated to this area that happened to drive by. And we tell them. So we tell the developer, you know, there's been an issue, here's the situation, and nine times out of ten at least, developers take care of it. Sometimes it takes more than a day. Um, but normally, developers are very good. Um, it's very difficult, you know, as the person in charge of, if you will, overseeing the library project, it is impossible to know what construction is going to happen at a given day. Things change all the time. Whatever we planned last night is probably not going to happen exactly the way we envisioned. So everyone has to understand these are very fluid projects, sometimes weather dependent. Um, the most important thing is that we have an open channel of communication for anything that comes in that's a concern by any abutter or any resident or any uh, member of the town. Um, and generally we have that. Generally we have pretty good relationships with our developers and with our projects. Um, and I, I never want to discourage comments from the residents, but at least in terms of the ones I've dealt with, they understand this is all work in progress and everyone is doing the best they can. Um, okay. Uh, so I understand that it's the building inspector and then sometimes uh, the, the police. Um, and sometimes fire, but. Right. right. But the permits are, are, are kind of in depth, and, and uh, I don't, we don't expect the, the police to read up on all the permits uh, in town. Um, so, so for the specifics of the permit, and there are a number, there's, the reason this is so important to, to, get, to get, get this hammered out is that there are a number of developments that are going to be happening or are happening around town, and um, I just wanted to identify who swings by and does an occasional inspection, much like the, the health agent goes in and inspects uh, restaurants and, and, uh, and whatnot. H has the, uh, the um, building inspector gone over to the site and inspected it Many on times. occasion? Many times. As well as plumbing, electric, water. Yes, inspectors are there frequently. Thank you. So hopefully that answers the questions. I don't know, Matt. Had yeah, I, I, I don't, Bob. I don't want to. We, I'd like to move on. That was the only, the only question I was trying to answer was who's it, and and and, uh, and I got that. I think Jean had her. Yeah. yeah I know. Just yeah, jump yes, in if Jean. I could. Um, Jean Deli is assistant town manager. I don't know if all of the members of the board were here when we did the EDSAT, but yeah. the EDSAT yes. we looked in the mirror and we said. Um, what kind of community are we and why don't we have more economic development? And one of the biggest messages we got when we looked in the mirror and we answered all those hundreds of questions was, you could do better at being business friendly oh. as a way to encourage economic development. And I just want to make that point. Um, we do take enforcement seriously, but we also take relationships building seriously. And I'd rather call Matt and say, we have an issue, can you fix it? then send them an enforcement letter. Okay. That would be our preference. And for the past four years, we've been told that we should be working that way. And so I just want to make it clear that that is what my department does. I'm often very much involved in the, in the um, discussions with the building inspector on how do we solve the problem versus let's write a letter and just get it out the door. Um, myself, my staff, uh, police, private developers, citizens, chamber, business owners. I'd like to think we're all community partners working together with the same goal. Thank you. Thanks, Gene. Again, um, I'm not accusing anyone of being business friendly, too business friendly, not business friendly enough. I, I just wanted to get that, that clarified. Um, John, that was, a, that was a clear direction, Gene, from the board four or five years ago. To, that, you know that we sat through saw the results of what we heard back and kind of the the marching orders really not that there were they were orders but was kind of the agreement around the table was that we needed to do our best to try to soften a reputation whether it was fair or not is kind of immaterial it was real um, and that <clears throat> 
it would be a lot easier to work um, over a phone call or around a cup of coffee and you know and, and I think that that doesn't give us tight structure I'm not but you know, that's, that wasn't the point of this this uh, agenda <laughs> item really it was just to clarify the question who's right. responsible for uh, inspecting compliance and and we got that so um, yes 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 One last comment, sorry. Uh, I think you know the word enforcement brings to mind sort of slamming down the hammer and I, and I don't think that's what's intended here I think it's if if a resident has a concern how is it handled um, and the, the answer very simply is the building inspector inspects it I don't think there's any desire amongst the board to micromanage how that conversation takes place um, as long as the permits themselves are followed okay thank you um, so uh, we're going to do the tax classification hearing portion of the meeting now. Um, the, the purpose of this hearing is described in the hearing notice. Chair, sure. uh, yes. you read the notice. Uh, yeah. Do, do, do you? I, I, I have it. I can read it. No, to the secretary. Or the secretary. You got it? Excellent. So, Vanessa is going to read no, the notice. The notice, the notice is in the past. I think you have it. I think I saw it. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's typically what we do. You got it. Okay. Just a form thing. Okay. Sure. So this is the this is what the hearing is about. Uh, to the inhabitants of the town of Reading, notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held in accordance with the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 369 of the Acts of 1982, on the issue of determining a residential factor in assessing the percentage of tax burden to be borne by each class of property for fiscal year 2019. The hearing will be held on Tuesdays. October 16, 2018, at 8 p.m. in the Select Board's Meeting Room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass. The five classes of property involved are residential, open space, commercial, industrial, and personal property. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic is available uh, in the Select Board packet, made public on Thursday, October 11, 2018, and on the website at www.readingma.gov. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 12 p.m. on October 11, 2018 to tanmanager.ci.reading.ma.us by order of Robert Lesher, town manager, uh, uh, October 2nd, Excuse me, October 2nd, I think, 18, 2018. All right. Um, so the way the tax classification hearing will go is that um, we're going to follow a three-step process similar to last year. Uh, Victor will present the process and the information needed to determine the 2019 residential tax rate. Um, the select board will discuss the uh, um, information and ask questions of Victor. Uh, and then lastly, or actually second to last, the public hearing will open up where people can um, state, provide their feedback. The public hearing portion of the, uh, of, of the meeting, y you speak, we listen, we don't talk. Um, and it doesn't mean we're not hearing you, it's just that it's, it'll, it's allow you to speak. Um, um, after, the, after that is done, the secretary will provide a series of motions through which the board will determine a residential factor, uh, selection of a discount for open space, uh, granting of residential tax exemption, and granting of a small commercial exception, uh, exemption. Um, so, so that the public, everybody is up to date on uh, what we discussed last time, what we voted on last time. Uh, the board voted uh, to have a 1.5 factor for senior class, uh, senior tax relief this year. That factor is slightly lower than last year's factor of 2.0. So with that, I'll pass it over to Victor and go grab some water if you don't mind. Well, thank you very much, folks. Happy to be here for classification, fiscal 19, for the town of Reading. 
as the chairman said, there are four main issues regarding classification that will be discussed this evening. The selection of a minimum residential factor that determines any potential uh, shift in taxes. Selection of a discount for open space, granting of a residential exemption, and the granting of a small commercial exemption. And by local option, it's determined the Reading Senior Circuit Breaker tax relief amount. Minimum res residential factor, an MRF of one would yield a single tax rate. Pretty simple calculation. Take the estimated tax levy, 73.7 million, divided by our total value, over 5.1 billion, and you come out to 1420 for an estimated single tax rate. When we look at what occurred with the Reading Senior Circuit Breaker program, for this year, 177 seniors applied for the exemption, 175 were approved. The two that were not approved were because of ownership issues in their property relative to uh, the way the trust was structured. <clears throat> the total amount uh, for everyone that received the circuit breaker credit was $175,040. The select board does have- Could you enlarge available. that, Victor? Pardon? Could you enlarge that? Sure. Yeah, much better, thank you. $175,040. The available options to the select board, uh, they can provide senior tax relief anywhere from one half up to double the circuit breaker credit received. Uh, at our pre-classification hearing, the board previously determined, and I'm very thankful for it, um, a, a, a reimbursement of one and a half times the senior circuit breaker credit. The senior circuit breaker credit for calendar year 2017 was $1,080 off, the uh, off of their uh, income taxes. If 150% uh, were selected, uh, we'd be shifting $262,560, and the residential tax rate would be $14.26, and the commercial, industrial, and personal rate would remain unchanged at $14.20. By design, the exemption is funded for a shift in the residential class of property only. single family home value this year is 594,600 and the table below summarizes what the estimated tax rate and estimated tax bill would be at various shift intervals between from 1 to 1.1 and this 1.0034 is the interval at which the tax rate rates will be equalized or the best attempt we could make to equalize the tax rate between the two classes. And this is a history of the average single family tax bill. Uh, as you can see, fiscal 19, uh, the estimate at uh, a tax rate with the senior tax exemption factored in would yield an estimated bill of 84.79, which represents an increase that also includes the override and any debt exclusions that we have of 9.25%. So Victor, back up on that slide. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kept putting these numbers into Excel trying to have them match uh, the, 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 percent, the, percent, <laughs> no, the percent change yeah. um, from one year to the next. and. Um, I think you just explained the reason why, for example, the difference between, let's just go with the top numbers, uh, 5,572 went up to 5,696. Mm -hmm. That's not, uh, that doesn't, if you just use those numbers and calculate out what the percentage increase is, it doesn't come out to be 2.23. Uh, but I think it's because, why is that? I think it is 2.23. I think, he, so if you were to subtract the 5572 from the right. 5696, that's the difference, right? Yeah. And you have a simple equation of the difference over the smaller number, yep. do the cross multiplication, right, or divide. 
I see people feverishly over there. Everybody goes back to fourth grade math. I find this massive. A tough old fourth grade math. It, it may be in a different table. Uh, it's um. That's the math. <coughs> that's that's right. Is that the, I mean, he's right. He's right. Two point two Correct. two. I, that's what I get. Yeah. I, All right. I, I think that it's because the percentage is on the top row as opposed to the bottom. See what I mean? So oh. Two seven nine five. It's, it's what it went up from the year before. Yeah. Thank you, Victor. Sorry that's for the the, the, okay. the the high school math uh, <laughs> discussion. Uh, for fiscal 19, the uh, tax levy does include a total debt exclusion amount of slightly over $2.9 million. It adds 57 cents to the uh, fiscal 19 estimated residential rate. It also adds at a single tax rate $338.92 to the average single family home and $922 to the average commercial property. <coughs> The um, sales activity in the town from 2016 to 2017, because my values for most residential properties are based on sales during county in 2017, we see uh, sales activity up a little bit, but days on market down tremendously. People are buying homes that are listed for roughly a month. And the average sale price from 16 to 17 just exploded by approximately $90,000 people who want to pay top dollar to be in this town. For all the right reasons. The average commercial property value is a little over 1.6 million. And like I did with the residential, I'm showing CIP shift factors of one to 1.1, 1 .1, what the estimated tax rate would be, the estimated tax obligation. And again, at this number over here, the shift rate that would determine an e our best approximation for equal tax rate for all classes of property. Now, when we look at that 1.648 million, very high. That's taking in everything from Home Depot at 24 million down to paved commercial parking lots with a value of 22,000. A better number to look at is the median value median value of all commercial properties slightly over 700000 And it brings the estimated tax obligation back down to earth somewhat from the numbers that we were looking at before because there's only a certain select bunch of properties that would pay at that extraordinary rate. Like most of them will be down in the Walkersbrook area and what have you. But again, same comparison showing the shift rates, the anticipated tax rate, and the anticipated tax obligation. I did run another number, taking out properties above a million, taking out all those parking lots and what have you. And the median of that number was 480,000. I, I try to look at this a couple different ways to come down. What is the average value of the average small business in town? So uh, just to give you an idea that, you know, the tax increase in the first slide that we talked about would only affect a small portion, but yet a significant valuation base. Everybody else falls way, way below that number. So you got to the 400 by taking out the top and the bottom? I took out everything, a million dollars and over. And your parking lots, your uh, Everything below $100,000 yeah. or? 150, I think it was. Okay. Because so. that obviously cut it in half. Yeah. yeah. The median number. And when you look at the six properties are above uh, 10 million, 27 from two to 10, and 38 properties from one to two million. Everything else, 83 uh, properties are under 500,000 and 56 from 500,000 to a million. So really the need of the commercial market are those lower value properties. <coughs> Average commercial tax bill. A lot of fluctuation here for various reasons, from new construction during certain years when uh, sites came online to revaluations to, dare I say, over-aggressive valuation methodologies approximately eight years ago. Uh, <laughs> um, 
But in 2009, if you remember previously, the anticipated increase in the residential size 9.25, the uh, anticipated tax increase at a single tax rate of 1420 would be 6.36%. So a little less than 3% less than what your average Reading homeowner is expected to pay. Next part of the discussion is about a discount for open space. This is very narrowly de defined in Mass General Law. It's defined as land which is not otherwise classified or which is not taxable under provisions of what we call chapter land, chapter 61A and 61B. Those are primarily education, uh, agricultural or open space, say, picture something with a golf course. There's a chapter component in there that affects the valuation. Um, and land not held for the production of income, but is maintained in an open and natural condition, and which contributes significantly uh, to the benefit and enjoyment of the public. If such land existed in Reading, and Reading ever adopted this measure, an exemption of 25% could be adopted for that class two. But Reading has never adopted that classification, and we have never identified any land that meets that strict uh, state definition of open land. <coughs> residential exemption. Select board may adopt a residential exemption for residential properties in town that are owned or occupied. An amount of up to 35% of the average assessed value of all residential properties, including vacant land, is used for the calculation. Adopting this would raise the residential tax rate from 1420 to $23.70 per thousand. The estimated break-even point is 490100 All this does is redistributes, you know, taxes and the, the higher value homes pay for the exemption for the lower value homes. It only works in communities that have a, a large mix of residential real estate with a lot of investor owned real estate, like Chelsea, Boston, Cambridge, and all that. And since the shift is only in the residential class, again, higher value homes would be paying for it. And most of the homes in Reading are all over occupied. So probably not something we'd like to engage in. And a small commercial exemption, up to 10% of property value for commercial properties only, not industrial or personal property. Total property value is less than $1 million. The business can't have more than 10 employees as certified by the Department of Employment and Training. One business in a building of several would qualify only if all other businesses qualify. The exemption doesn't go to the business owner, it goes to the owner of the real estate. And less than a dozen communities in the Commonwealth have adopted this exemption. Every year I receive a list and I look through it to try to find the business in the building that might qualify. And you may find one or two in a given year that <clears throat> it wouldn't be something beneficial that could significantly impact the entire uh, commercial property base for an exemption because there's really nothing out there that qualifies the restricted definition. Neighboring communities for last year, <clears throat> This gives a breakdown of all the communities right around us and what their average single family values were, uh, the average tax bills, and their tax rates. By happenstance, last year we ended up with a five cent differential between residential and commercial rates, our best attempt to you know, pay for the amount of senior tax relief and try to get it as close as we can. Uh, of the communities, only Reading has a commercial, industrial, and personal sector less than 10%. The basic um, breakdown for Wait, uh, Reading, sorry, Wakefield on the brain, I did that last night, um, is about 92% residential and 8% commercial. That's pretty material in that slide. Yeah. Um, the Middlesex League, do they have softball teams, by the way? I don't know, just the way it sounds. Like they have caps. It is, it's just breaking yeah. Same kind of breakdown for other uh, communities uh, in and around in Middlesex County. 
again with the uh, average single family. Wow, look at Belmont and Winchester. I almost hurt my finger typing those values. A lot of commas in those numbers. There's a lot of commas, too many commas. Uh, the, the average tax bills, and again, this is for 18, the last complete year that we can obtain. And the uh, different tax rates uh, for those that split and those that don't. And now we're on to, uh, let's see, largely residential comparable communities. Another list of communities that folks are reading many years ago thought that they were comparable to, so I take that list and go through it. And again, wow, four of them on this one over. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and again, the tax rates and what have you. Reading at the third lowest average single tax bill uh, of those listed, all communities except Wakefield and Milton had a shift capacity of 1.5%. Wakefield and Milton can shift to 1.75%, so they can shift an additional 25% beyond what Reading would do uh, on to commercial taxpayers. Oh, this is my favorite one. <laughs> I just make it big aware. No, no, okay. <laughs> this is just. This well, was in last there, week. This was in the packet from two weeks ago. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. The origin story of this was. I wish we had it all together. together. And I thought it was a bunch of assessors. Oh no! No, we got three towns. This is our formal list of peer communities, as adopted by our finance committee. I don't know what you're saying. It, it's available on the town website under the packet information. Break out a magnifying glass, sorry for the size. <laughs> um, and I throw in a couple of important terms that we've, you know, banding about. Levy, levy limit, revenue growth, override, override capacity, debt exclusion, and stuff like that. Victor, am I correct in reading this that Winchester has oh, yeah. as a reverse split. The water bill is water bill. Yeah. There Why is that? Just out of curiosity. Uh, wanted to make a tax deductible. It's unusual, but they, they are paying some water debt <coughs> and some other incentives that they build into the tax rate. Mm -hmm. That That's just the way it manifests itself. You know, they, they brought some enterprise fund debt in, inside the tax levy and then did a lot of things with commercial. Is that because uh, of the large amount of uh, non-taxable? No, they, well, I'm sorry, yes. They thought they could save residents half a million a year in yeah. uh, tax relief for the federal government. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't mind, I just want to make a quick announcement. Um, there's a small fire tonight at Home Depot and Jordan's. Everyone's fine, but both of those buildings are closed. Oh, and again, there were no injuries, fire, and our LPR on the scene, but everyone's fine, just just to say. So don't rush down there if you're planning to go down. You're creating a divergent. Sorry to interrupt. That's their tax rep calling me. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. want their assessment <laughs> <level>. <laughs> 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 Any questions for the material that I presented? Um, Barry. Um, thank you, Victor. As usual, this is really um, comprehensive. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I sort of called through Victor's thing, and I, and I sort of have a short presentation that I did on a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. With your indulgence, I, it would take five or six minutes, and I gave it to Bob, so I'd have to move over to the computer so to do is that. That would be can I, fine as long as you yeah. check Victor's percentages. <laughs> Tomatoes and him, get any. All right. So this is uh, okay. Great. You're a bigger tiger. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> bigger tiger. Oh yes, I know. So um, right. So um, I did call through a lot of the stuff that Victor did, and before I kind of get started, I wanted just to. This is now my fourth year of debating this here as a member of the select board, and every year. It gets more nuanced and nuanced. I learn a little bit more. Um, one of the things that I kind of I took away from the override um, as sort of an, an example is that the, the reason why I think the override worked is that initially, if you remember that meeting in January, there was efforts made to say, well, you know, let's kind of just put a menu together. Let's have this amount for schools, this amount for for res, you know, for for public safety or whatever. And it was, you know, after a three-hour debate. Um, the board correctly and the community correctly uh, voted that, no, we're one town. 
we're one, we're one Reading, we're one tax bill, and everybody worked together to make sure that we got the funds needed for the services that we all think are dear and, and important. And and I think that that's that sort of um, that way of operating has somewhat been missing from this debate over the last few years, where it's sort of been pitched that in order to support small business, you need to have a single factor tax rate. And that if you didn't have a single, fa ta single factor tax rate, you weren't pro-business, or you weren't supportive of business. And I think what makes Reading a tremendous town, um, and, and the reason why all those people, as Victor said, who want to move here and pay top dollar for the house, is that we have an incredible downtown and an incredible um, array of businesses here to support local residents. Um, we are a special town because of the small business and the businesses that are operating in this town. And likewise, I'm, I don't want to talk for any of the, my friends in the business community, but I'm sure that you relocated here because you thought Reading was a great place to do business, that you really wanted to serve a lot of the residents in here, and that it's a mutually beneficial relationship. And I think if we come to this discussion and this debate with that outlook, that we are better town because of the business owners here, and we are a better town because of the residents that support those businesses, I think a lot of the noise goes to that. And so that's one of the nuances that I've taken away from it. Um, and so I want to present um, sort of, it's really, none of this is really original research. I really just sort of took what Victor did, and I want to put it in perspective. And then, unlike in the last years when I've been in this debate, I'm going to say what I'm going to say, and then I'm going to sit down, and I keep my mouth shut, and I'm going to listen to what my colleagues have to say and what you have to say. But here's sort of what I pulled together, some additional facts. And I'm assuming everybody can see that. Um, so since the recovery, and I count the recovery as the year 2012, the average commercial property value in Reading increased cumulatively. I don't mean like on average here, cumulatively from the beginning to now by 5%. And in the same period of time since the recovery, the average residential property value in Reading increased cumulatively 34%. It's no secret, residential property values are going up at a much faster pace than commercial. Subsequently, I just bigger. took what Victor did. Bigger. Oh, I think that might be his. Do we have this in our, in our anywhere no, in our this. material? No, I think this might it's be as big as it goes. Oh, is that better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay, so um, I just took what Victor did and I put it side by side. This is since the recovery. Every year, the percentage of average tax bill increases by class since 2012. And in every year, the average residential tax bill has increased more than the average commercial tax bill has increased. In some years, the average commercial tax bill went down. Now, I know that that's skewed by some of the bigger property, but every year, year after year after year, since the recovery, residential tax bills have increased faster than, res, uh, res, than commercial. And also, in a parallel way, the values of the properties have you know, moved geometrically along that same line. Correct? Yeah, that's the... Right. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, what you, yeah. what you so, really need to do to make yeah, a proper so comparison I, I, I to is to pull to those two together, that. Barry. Right. Just, just let them so, finish. Um, so I also pulled together, what's the differential between commercial and residential tax rates by community? And the top tier are all the towns that touch Reading, um, basically, our, our geographical neighbors. And the numbers represent how much higher the resident, the commercial tax rate is in those communities over the, uh, the commercial tax rate. The only town that touches us that has a single tax rate is North Reading. You'll notice Reading has a five cent differential. That was because the board last year passed, you know, basically passed along a little bit more of the senior tax relief to the commercial class. Other notable towns around here, um, that's the differential. Basically, the residential tax rate, uh, the commercial tax rate is that much lower than what the residential tax rate is. So. That's all well and good. Barry, um, can you back up one slide, please? Yes. Yeah. Could I ask you a question? Sure. So would it be fair to put a column? Um, you have all the towns that touch Reading, and you have the differential between the commercial and residential. What you don't have is the column of percentage of commercial right. properties versus, you know, 
residential. And I think if you're going to do this, okay. in fairness, you've got to put that column in. This is, this is my presentation, John. You, you know, you, you, you can go next. So, but to your point, a lot of this is just an academic exercise until you really look at, because most people just say, that's all great. What's, what's the impact on me? You know, if I'm, if I'm an owner, I want to know what that impact, all these increases and percentages mean on me. So I just did a quick, and then a, a, a quick, I did five or six properties um, between Wakefield and Reading, commercial properties. And, the, and why did I pick Wakefield? Easy access no. to info. Easy access. Yes. <laughs> the same guy does the, does the evaluation. So there's, it's one less control that you have to worry. And so what I did was I took a number of commercial properties that had similar valuations in, uh, in, in Wakefield, similar valuations in Reading, and so showed you what the, the actual tax bill is. Okay, so um, can you see that? Uh, that's um, 612 Main Street, probably some of our most um, favorite businesses um, are in that block. Um, they're 2009, they're valued at $3.2 million. Actually, almost 3.3. Um, their 2019 tax bill is 46,582. That's with no split. That's 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 with doing absolutely nothing, right? That's that's if we just did what we were that yeah. what we did. The same property in Wakefield, not the same property, but the same value property, 451 Main Street, also $3.2 million assessment. It's paying $80,000 a year in taxes. 46,000 in Reading, 80,000 in Wakefield. <coughs> we go to our favorite, one of our fa another favorite, but Harrow's. I just had a chicken salad sandwich. I told Wally that it was for it for dinner. Okay, in 2019, that, that's about a $1.2 million assessment. They paid about $17,000 in tax, will pay $17,000 in taxes in 2019. Go to a similarly assessed $1.2 million property, single use occupancy in Wakefield, they're paying $32,000. Same, same, and, and I'll go down the list. I don't want to. I think people get the message. Um, oh, here's Bagel World, um, another favorite. Fifteen thousand no, no dollars in taxes, million dollar assessment. Um, similar property, million dollar assessment in uh, in Wakefield, and they're paying twenty seven thousand. Now we go to the Big Banana. Maybe a figure could tax all the real property that's skewed out on the Main Street. That yeah. Would so, come out of the fair. Yeah. So we go. Um, <laughs> Uh, we go to Walker's Brook, $25 million assessment. Might not be that high. It may not be. Maybe it's 25, <laughs> 24, 5. That's what it was yesterday. Um, they're paying uh, $355,000 a year in taxes. <coughs> Similar property, $25 million. Quantapawa Parkway, $25 million. They're paying $639,000 in taxes. That's almost a $300,000 difference. Wakefield and Reading look a lot, feel a lot. Same guys doing the numbers, yet the, um, the the political will was basically that 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 homeowners and residential tax were, were going to be um, were going to be looked at differently. Let me so, interject the point here. I think it's an important one. Uh, lest anyone in the audience think that had we this kind of a tax rate, we would increase our tax take by that amount. Oh, oh absolutely. No, that is not the case. Right. No, th this is, okay. and I probably should. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you should, we should have all do that. Right. None of this is going to bring nickel one to the town of Reading. We can shift this all the way. Now, now Wakefield does a 1.75 shift. That is the highest I think the law allows. Yes. No way, you know, uh, while I draw a breath, would I ever consider anything like that for Reading. I'm just giving you these are the examples of what a neighboring town Since does. you're comparing them, could you give me the number of commercial property, the percentage of commercial property in Wakefield compared to Reading? I, I, it, it's, it's in our packet, but the notion is it, it doesn't, it, it's about what the tax bill is on each property. So I let me, let me, I have, I have a couple more things that well, I want to Well, Barry, I, I'm sorry, I'll let you finish. Right. But we are on, I, you know, I want to allow... I have a couple more slides left, so let me just go through this. So, the question that we need to ask ourselves now as we do this debate <coughs> in 2019 is that now we've had the override. Okay, so what's the impact of the override on downtown commercial property versus the impact on the average single family residence? Because last year it was a theoretical discussion. This year we know what the effect of the override is going to be because it's now in our, it's going to be in our tax bills. <coughs> so this is, I'm not going to say that this is the average single family home. It's my average single family home. And the reason why I chose it on here uh, was because I didn't have to ask anybody's permission to put it up. <laughs> so um, in FY18, 
The family at 54 Longview Road paid $8,900 in taxes. This year with the override, we're paying uh, $9,700 and $801. That's with your override and your two and a half? That's, that's what the tax, that's, that's, that, that, that's, that's the increase to our family, right. okay? And, and which we gladly voted for and happy to pay, by the way. So, I pulled the data from Victor's, let me make this a little smaller. Hopefully people can see that. So It'd these are some of the nobody will be able to see it. So see? Well, yeah. Um, Good so enough. I pulled I pulled about four or five properties from downtown and showed what their assessed value is, what their 2018 and 19 taxes were, and what the increase is. This is also with the override. Okay. So 612 Main Street with uh, Dimitri's, Bunratty's, plus six others. The tax bill is going to go up a little under uh, uh, under eighteen hundred dollars. Now compare that to the single family home at eight hundred. Here's a property that's that's assessed five times more. Its taxes are going to go up eighteen hundred. It's a, it's an increase. You know everybody acknowledges that. But again, as most people, ha as the business community has pointed out, most of the tax increases, um, if you are a tenant. Um, gets paid, gets passed along uh, by the property, you know, by the property owner in terms of because it's a, you got triple net leases. <coughs> but here you have a property that's going up eighteen hundred dollars with seven tenants, right? So assuming everybody's paying the same, and I don't, I didn't look at leases, and and it, 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 so that eighteen hundred dollars gets spread around seven properties. That increase is significantly lower than it would be the average single family house. You go down the list. Arrows, $182 goes up. Uh, 640 Main Street with Sims and Goodhart's, $2.3 million assessment versus a $700,000 assessment. It goes up only $500 more than a single family. So the point is, is that the impact, if it is, if those tax increases are passed along, the impact on those businesses, assuming that those tax increases get passed in your leases, and I assume they do, that's what has been testified for before this board before, the impact on maybe that one individual or individual business is far less than what it has been for the single family homeowner. Um, and so, again, just a point of fact, if we were to take a commercial and residential tax, uh, do a factor of 1.05, not 1.5, not 1.75 like they do in Wakefield, 1.05, that will make the, ta the tax rate differential 71 cents. Remember the first slide, everybody, the exception of we go up 71 cents, Linfield had the smallest one at $3.32. Three at, um, at a factor of 1.1, I think it goes up a dollar 40 if I'm, oh, no, I'm sorry, yeah, a dollar 48. Um, so, these are, this is the lay of the land. Um, this, this is what's happening. So even if we did nothing, the fact that the assessed value of homes has increased so much more than the assessed value of business, just to keep even, we would have to do some type of a shift. Just forget about the equity piece. Forget about who we want to pay taxes versus not. Just because the, of the fact that assessments on residential properties are going up so high, we would need a small residential factor just to even that part of it out before we even got to the discussion about who should be paying why. So Mr. Chair, I thank you for indulging me. That is my presentation. I am now gonna sit down and listen to what everyone else has to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Who would like to comment? Oh, I would like to comment. Yeah, uh, uh, Victor, Victor was gonna answer a question. You had asked about the split in yeah. Wakefield. It's about uh, 86.14. So, Melrose, on the other hand, almost is twice as almost a, mm -hmm. twice as that's, much that's commercial. Value. But that counts as split. Yeah, that's basically, we arrive at that by assessed value. Melrose would be somewhat comparable. Melrose is about 94 percent residential and six percent commercial. Now, is that, know, is that worth that? Victor, are those percentiles <coughs> calculated? Based on value. Based on value okay. and not the split. You don't include the split. No, that is as they exist before you split anything. Anything, okay, thank you. John, you well, like who knows next. that, I mean, you could have mailed that one in by text. That we, you know, Barry, you know, took over. You could have stayed home and watched the Red Sox tonight. <laughs> eight, eight, eight to two. What is whoa, 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 whoa. So anyway, I, you know, I, I think that when you isolate facts to make a sales presentation, 
it's a, you come up with curious conclusions. And I didn't realize that, that we were gonna have, or that we had the opportunity for dueling conclusions um, based on sales presentations. Had I only known, um, I certainly would have put one together. However, you preempted me in that regard, and I think we certainly need to think about what you've put up there, but I think it had glaring holes in of omission in order to be able to tell the whole story, which is what I think you were trying to do, tell the whole story. Um, but I think if there's a slant in a certain direction, some of those facts get left out. So, so what were your, what would you, what do you see as omissions? Uh, well, comparisons, for example, that I pointed out as we went along. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that, you know, if you were gonna make a, this came across to me as a sales presentation. Well, let's, um, let's can we stop and, saying you know, that and just uh, talk well, to no, each I'm other just, with, I'm, with I'm being candid about how it came across to me. I yeah. think had it, had a greater breadth of facts, and I, I don't know if you work with Victor on this. I, I no, know that I there's a lot of Wakefield stuff going on in here, so. Um, he asked me for some info on Wakefield, here you go. And uh, of course, and you know, as a, you know, as, as the highly talented guy you are, you know, providing that kind of information. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, but I think it's important to hear from the business owners here in town. Yeah. Well, Vanessa. I think before we get to the, to the public comment, which is, is part of the hearing, I think it would be wise if we as a board yeah. discussed it a little bit yeah. more. Um, May, yeah, but I can. One more thing. Oh, Lord. I looked at data a little bit differently. Bring it on. <coughs> right over here, we had a five cent differential in the tax rate for fiscal 18. Mm. If you adopt this as a minimum residential factor, this would be the split, 1.0071 mm -hmm. would be the best approximation to maintain that five cent shift. The parity. Well, the, the five cents was created last year. And that's the 75-25 split of the senior. No, that's, no. that's it started with that. That's this up now. <laughs> That'll, that's, it's not. So that's, a quite, that's quite a change, Victor, from what you did last year. So last year it was 0 .0025, and that created a five cent shift, yep. which based on best estimates um, was gonna create a parity between the commercial load and the residential load <coughs> as far as maintaining, you know, as close to a one-to-one -one as you mm -hmm. could and still fund the entire senior um, the senior tax relief, which I, I thought was the goal. Um, so my question is, we're, we're having less senior tax relief, yet we're having almost three times the shift. Is that because we miscalculated last year? So the values changed. Okay, fair. I just, I'm interested in how, it, mm -hmm. how that differential jumped, but that actually makes sense. <laughs> and the other number I have here, 1.0547. People typically think of Reading as 92% residential, 8% commercial. Mm -hmm. This factor over here mm -hmm. takes, the, takes the valuation and makes the tax burden that 92 and 8 split. Just throwing it out there, I'm not making it as a yeah. suggestion or anything, but just to put your mind in a different you know, uh, reference point, Putting those numbers out there, is, so, is, Victor, is that because the, the that the valuations of the residential properties exploded relative to commercial? That they always have. So that so that 1.057047 keeps you at the same percentage of what we are in terms of the percentage of properties. Which you typically, it's right now. I think it's 92.6 percent residential. So the 1.0547 would be the thing that makes up for the valuation explosions. Yes. Okay. That's that. That's sort of what I was. Just, which, which is essentially a doubling. Is that correct? You know, you go from 0.0071 to 0.0547. Oh, it's no, it's not. No, it's, no, it's five times. Right. No more. <coughs> no, almost eight times. Um, and you're trying to offset by doing that. The valuation. Right. So that's about a 79 cent differential. I'd, li I'd like to just interrupt and give, uh, give Vanessa I, and Dan. I just wanted to point No, no, that's great. Thank you. Give Vanessa and Dan a chance to uh, speak. 
Uh, I have a question more in regards to procedure for this. So we as a board discussed this now. We open it up to the public hearing, hear comments from the public. Um, do we then continue or do immediately vote? You close the hearing and then we can talk about it some more. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, I'll so, hold my so comments then until discussion. after right. the yeah. public hearing. Same here. I will do I will do so as well. I'd like to hear from the public. And Barry, thank you for putting together the yep. Yeah. Um, thanks, Barry. Uh, and thank you, Victor, uh, for your presentation. So I'll now open it up to public comment. I know a, a lot of people would like to comment. So um, how many people would like to comment? I won't assume anything. Raise your hands. Okay, okay. So um, we, we, we welcome your comments. If someone has already stood up and, and, and made your the same point, um, we don't necessarily need to hear a repeated statement um, but I'd like to give you all a chance to comment now so please um, raise your hand and I'll try to pick randomly and um, give your name and your address I'm sorry oh you can raise your hand <laughs> I'm sorry Yes, Lisa. Hi. Hi. I'm Lisa Egan. I live at 8 Oak Ridge Road. Um, I'm also the director of the Chamber of Commerce, which I think you guys know because we've talked before. Um, I just wanted to say that when we talk about a split tax rate and what we're talking about within the chamber are really the small shopkeepers and retailers and service providers, many of who, who came out tonight, so I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, I'm not talking about the Walkers Brook big box stores because I think that they as shown by the data are the outliers, these huge companies, you know, there's only a handful of them, maybe a couple dozen in Reading. Um, my observation is that it's been challenging for our Main Street businesses in downtown Reading in the 14 years I've lived here has expanded tremendously. You know, I still remember the dummy that was in the middle of Main Street and I never knew if I should like take a left or a right around it. Now it's beautiful and all manicured and it looks fantastic. Um, but I will say I'm worried about some of the changes I'm seeing too, just in the market. I know that um, Raspberry Beret is going out of business, and I know a cornerstone of Reading, um, Pavarotti is up for sale, which is a shame. Um, they recently renamed Zuka, and they're on the market. So I just think that that's just an example in the last two weeks of two main street businesses that are changing. And a comment that um, I also wanted to share is that I regularly get calls about the Walgreens building and why a relatively new construction, you know, for relatively new building is sitting dark in our main street. And I know there's been a lot of Facebook chatter about it too, and wouldn't it be great if it was this or that? And I just, I worry that this trend of, you know, the dark storefronts and places going out or just closing um, on ba our main street will continue if we add another um, burden to our shopkeepers. And again, I'm speaking more to the smaller, um, locally owned independent, and um, folks who really support our community in a lot of different ways to make up the fabric of the town. So I'd like you to consider that when you finish your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and if I might? Yes. Just to address Walgreens, because I, I understand that's on Facebook. I don't know what Facebook is, but I've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> don't go on it. Uh, no, yeah. I'm not. Trust You're me. a better human being. Okay. Than well, I'm <laughs> doing the best I can. Um, Walgreens um, owns the building. They're paying taxes on the building. Um, they are going through a merger. I've talked to them three times. They're headquarters in the Midwest. They don't know where Reading is. They don't care that the building's empty. There's nothing the town can do to make any difference on their operation. They're dressing up their balance sheet. It's very frustrating for the town to have an empty store because it's not productive. Um, but just so it's clear that the town is not doing something or not doing something that has any benefit or, or impact on that. Um, oh, and we, I would never, I didn't I, mean no, to I know, I know, and I'm saying this is for the Facebook crowd. Okay. Who's <laughs> watching on Facebook. Um, we have even had uh, possible leasers of the space that I have gone to them with, and they have no interest in leasing it. Yes. So they're just going through a corporate merger. Their attention is elsewhere. I understand that. It's very unfortunate. Other towns across the country are going through the same thing. There's two Rite Aids in town. They don't want to have three. We'll see. Just, just to put that point of clarification out there, 
I agree with the comments that no one wants that to be vacant. I don't know what to do about it until the merger is done. Yeah. So Next question. Raise your hand. Thank you. Tim Dunham to Haven Street. Uh, could you go back to the slide where you show uh, the increase for residential and for uh, commercial, where it says the increase in $300 for residential and 900 for the commercial? It's in the first, in your first. Is that my, my, mine or his? No, his, oh. Victor's. In the first couple of slides. Okay. Right before that. Oh, oh. Go down. down. Right there. Adds $338 to average single family home, adds $922 to average commercial property. Right there is an increase. Is, is, am I reading that correct? Well, there's a debt exclusion that's spread throughout all taxpayers of the town. Okay. And the difference from average commercial value is over a million dollars more than the residential value. If you brought that down to the median value of okay. 701000 yeah. which is more reflective of the regular, smaller buildings in town, <coughs> the increase is slightly higher than So my tax has gone up $2,000 in the last three years. So, and I can show you that. I have, I have it. I have been paying the tax bill. So that's one thing. Now, number two, we do pay plenty of tax and this. The override doesn't, it doesn't affect us personally, except for the, the uh, except for the policing. But what else was the override for? Oh, police, fire, schools. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. So, no, it's I'm just, just asking, a hearing. I'm just asking yeah. the question. The schools. Yeah. So schools don't, if we can't vote on the override, can we? Not unless you live in the town. So you vote for the override, we'll pay for it. Okay, we have no control over that. There are three businesses in my building, Two Haven Street, which you, you all know where that is. There are three businesses that I've talked to who are considering leaving the town because their valuations, whether it's the mean valuation, three, four hundred thousand dollars, is being passed on to that smaller business and they can't afford the five thousand dollar tax bill, six thousand dollar tax bill. So just so you know, thank you. Thank you. Next. Yes. My name is Robin Crane. Um, I'm one of the owners of Fitness Within. We're located at 545 Main Street. Um, I'm just going to tell you um, a little story. But recently we were approached by another studio in town that closed down and asked us to take over their clientele. There was a lot of stuff going back and forth. What we did agree is that they could come into our studio. If they liked it, we would put them on one of our memberships and comp them for whatever time they had left at the other studio. <coughs> We're not being compensated from the business studio or the residents or the, the clients that are coming in. We have no guarantee they're gonna stay after it. We're doing it because we wanna be a good community partner and we wanna help out the residents that have really kind of got caught in a trap with the studio closing. <coughs> if you, if there is a split tax and you go for that, that's something we could not handle financially or help out. And that doesn't include all the services we give to the different charities, the different silent auctions, and they're very generous so that they can make more money at those uh, different events. That would have to stop or be reduced tremendously because we are triple net and it would be passed down and it would really impact us terribly, but we wouldn't be able to give back to the community like we like to do and be part of a, a you know, just a good community and support it. So that's my thing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess a couple of questions. Um, my name is Sean Ferris. Could you, could you in, stand up? Yeah, thanks. I, my name is Sean Ferris. I live here in town. Uh, I'm a real estate developer, <coughs> broker, uh, commercial real estate. Uh, yeah, it's called 12 North Properties. And one of the things is a few years ago, I went on like Zillow. And I don't know how, how they do the assessments, but I kind of try to manipulate something because I wanted to test something because someone mentioned something to me onto Zillow. So I faked the square footage of my house. <laughs> the assessors has me 2,000 square feet bigger than what it is. Large. Like at 8,900 square feet or 8,000 because my house is only 6,000. But I did at the show point. And I'm like, wow. But just kind of curious how where you guys getting your information for the assessors and that's one thing. Two well, that's that the, we well, have yeah. 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 so yes. So I'm by in January and file an appeal. Yeah. Yeah. I'll come out and inspect your house yeah. and fix whatever's wrong. Yeah. That's the remedy available to all yeah. taxpayers. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
we're just listening. We're okay. hearing. I know, but we're listening. So, uh, I know Victor can. We can eat his hair afterwards. So I guess you know you're saying that residential tax rates are high and have increased a lot, but that commercial has not, and it should be reflecting some. However, I deal with people relocating the business to the highest and best use, or even investors trying to buy in the town. If they look at the numbers and they look at the turnover of the tenants, whether they're long term, they're getting out of long term. And I think to be in this town, I mean, paying that extra money in the residential, you're kind of supporting the downtown because the downtown cannot really survive. You got no parking. I mean, I think that the Walgreens, whatever it is over there, absolutely, you should definitely take an eminent domain, knock it down, and make it parking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you got the money, we got the stuff. I mean, you, you know, a lot of these downtown businesses won't come in because you might have a little foot traffic, you got no parking. So you're going to get the small mom and pop business. And it is most of them are triple net leases. <coughs> and when they see increases like that, it's just they're not going to be here. You know? So that's what we're up against. Thank you. Um, next. Yes. <coughs> oh. Hi, my name is Dan Dillor. Um, I, I live at 519 Main Street. I also own a business at 519 Main Street. Um, I bought my business in uh, 2010. My story is, is, is I'm trying to grow my business, but I've, I've had setbacks over the years due to uh, regulations. Uh, smoking age went from 18 to 21. I, I, I lost business. Got, I, I started into the, the vape business a little bit, flavored cigars, took out flavors. I lost more business. Um, fortunately, I was able to get Kino, which kind of helped replace some of that lost revenue, but I've, I've never really fully recovered from that. And I'm not able to really grow my business the way I, the way I want, so I'm always looking for new revenue streams. So it's very hard right now, and um, I would appreciate you guys being still business friendly and um, you know keeping the right where it's at. Thank you. My name is Tom Connery. I'm the owner of 136 Haven Street, the former Reading Post Office. I began my underwriting of the property back in October of 2014. We've gone through a very diligent effort of repurposing uh, the building. We have expended tremendous sums, or will expend tremendous sums of money for historic preservation, underground parking, and affordable housing. These are all public benefits that we give back uh, to the community and its citizens. I've watched with interest um, about the stability of the community um, over the past couple of years. And I am extremely interested in what your decision is going to be um, with regard to the tax rate. People have told me that this is an iconic building and it will be the impetus for economic development along Haven Street. Along the front of the building, there will be 8,000 square feet of commercial space. I can only imagine that when I go to speak to prospective tenants about the economic viability of being here, that I will be challenged by an increased tax rate. And I wanted to share that with you. I wanted you to understand the enormous risk in this environment that we're taking in terms of delivering this building to the community, and I think that this would have a significant impact. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> my name is Kevin Burley, my family and I own the Tardy Burley Channel uh, Ministry. <coughs> Just to bring up a few different things that you guys think about when you make this decision. Is when you say tax property owners, a lot of those people here aren't necessarily the property owners. I want you to think of the people that are in the building, that own the business. A lot of them are running residents, they live here, they don't own the building, they're leasing it, um, they put their life savings into these businesses, they mortgage the houses, into, uh, being in these businesses. I want you guys to think of the people that make up this room. A lot of them I know personally, they're all very local. Um, another thing to think about is part of the grand bargain that's taking place is in the next few years, we're going from $11 minimum wage to $15 minimum wage. It's going to impact all of us significantly. It's a 37% increase. I don't know how much more people here can take until they want to close their doors. You know, like Tom said, <coughs> new people come in, are they really going to want to commit defaults against them? I ask that you guys really consider this to keep it the same for the time being. As John mentioned, the 
ratio of percentages of businesses to uh, the people that live here, it's very small compared to Wakefield. If those percentages were big, bigger, maybe it would make some sense. I don't think now is the time to do it. Thank you. Yes. Hi, I'm Rachel O'Neill. I own the flower shop Barracks. Um, Kevin brought up a ton of points that I was going to make. Um, I opened it in 2013. I grew up in Reading. Um, my lifelong dream was to open up a flower shop in Reading. Got to buy the name Eric's. Still paying it off. Um, I don't own my building, but I rent two spots out of four out of the building I'm in. So I pay for half of my building. If this happens, it will not only increase, affect me, it will affect me double. And I'm 100% sure that it will be hard with the minimum wage increasing for me to hire the other employee to help me bring <coughs> good creations that we're bringing to the community. Still, I won't be able to do it. And I'm already working 70 to 80 hours, which I'm sure we all are. And we could all use extra help. <laughs> so it, it affects everything. It's a domino effect. If I owned, my, if I owned my own building, I'd be able to be like, all right, let's figure out a, a way to make this work. None of us own the building that we own. A lot of us don't own the building that we're in. And it's gonna affect us. It's, when I go to sell my building in, I mean my business in 25, 30, whatever, 40 years, it's only gonna be the business. It's not gonna be the building <coughs> and the business because I can't afford to own a building in running with my business. Thank you. Yes. That very same point. Uh, I'm Angelo, fresh and clean, down on Haven Street. Uh, been there for two years. So I left corporate America to own my own business. I invested personal funds to open it. I've been there, like I said, for about two years. Rent has gone up. The lease went up. Taxes went up this past year. So I'm looking at an additional 0.5%. Metrics do tell a story, and I appreciate it. But when you have to sacrifice, Seven days a week, worth of putting that energy. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little passionate because it affects you. Yeah. You know, I show up, I might show up at 7 a.m., I'm the only one who does all the work there. I can't hire, I can't grow, my lease goes up, my parking space in front of my store, it's not working for me. That's a different topic. I don't know if I'm gonna survive another two years. Since I've been there, three stores have closed. That seems to be the trend. And I did my marketing research. I studied my metrics. It Reading seemed great until I opened my store here and I'm already stopped closing. Is that what you guys want? So I agree. Why don't we just wait? Maybe give another year, two years. If you grow your business percentage and your real estate, commercial real estate goes up to 10%, at that point, numbers might make more sense. But when you have 93% residential and 92, and then you still only have 8% commercial and that's not growing, and a lot of the folks here support me, they come to my store, but my foot traffic is not what I expect it to be. So if that does not increase, even though my landlord will, I know, will pass down the tax burden onto me, which was this past year, now I'm looking at an extra 200 bucks, let's say, okay? $200 might not hurt my pocket. But I have lease, I have gas, I've got to pay myself, which I haven't done so yet, in two years. I mean, my family matters too, as much as the family's here. So I think I want to be part of the community, that's why I moved in here. And I'm trying to actually, as a dry cleaner, provide a bunch of services, figuring one-stop shop. The, competi the competitors here are great, I'm not saying otherwise. But I figure let's bring something new to the community, and I thought Reading needs it. And I thought I would be a lot healthier than I am right now, but I am growing at a turtle pace, and I don't know how long I can support being there. Yet the building is beautiful, the downtown is getting better. I say just consider that before you make your decision, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, in the back. Yes, good evening. Uh, Rick Nazaro, um, my business partner, Bobby Botticelli. We are local realtors, and so my speech is a little bit different than yours. <clears throat> in that we own our commercial building. We're fortunate we've owned it for 30 years. It owes, owes us nothing. We 
grateful to the town for having us be in business for so long. Um, but I would like to say that as we enjoy the increase of our real estate values, part of that is because of all of these people. And I think we owe them a debt of gratitude rather than increasing their taxes because next to town sewer, the commuter rail, the next thing people love about this town is our downtown. So from the bookstore to the coffee shop to the dry cleaner, we have to have these places. You mentioned Wakefield. Drive through Wakefield, could they put up one more flag that says, please shop Wakefield, but they're desperate for people to, there's not a store downtown. If they're not selling martinis, there's nothing else to buy in Wakefield. So we thank you. We thank you as part of the community, and we hope that you can all stay in business. <coughs> That was fighting words. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> they make good martinis all that time. Thank you. Uh, yes, and then yes. My name is Shannon Cahalan, and I work at Reading Cooperative Bank, and I'm also the president of the chamber. Uh, I've had the, the pleasure of speaking to a lot of the small business owners here. Um, I've heard firsthand the terrible summer they've had, really slow, hard summers. And I know we have some wonderful properties on the horizon that are going to fill the streets. Um, um, but I, I ask you to please use this as a competitive advantage. Give these people a year, another year at least, to fill their shops and fill the streets and let people come into their stores and keep them all afloat. And um, I ask you just please let's maintain this for at least 2019. Thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Leslie Lakey. I own the Hitching Post Gift Shop at 2 Haven Street. Um, Hitching Post has been in Reading since 1962. I've owned it for 21 years, and I've seen a lot of changes going on in town. And I just want to um, <coughs> remind you that myself and my fellow small business owners are the ones that support the sports teams in town, the drama club, the band, all the elementary schools. Every time somebody has a fair or whatever, is fundraising for some reason, they come to our businesses and ask for donations. And we gladly give what we can give. Unfortunately, I think we're all in the same boat. We can't give to everyone, but we do try to support our Reading community. And I think um, it's really important for you to remember that if our businesses go away, the Home Depots, the CVSs, the Walgreens are not going to be there to have their names on the back of those baseball shirts or to support festival of trees or bring you shop the block. Um, we give back to our community regularly, and um, I just, like everyone else here, would ask you to um, consider all of that when you're making this decision. Thank you. Thank you. And they want more. Yeah. Yes. Hi, my name is Julie Centrella. I own Anya's Boutique. We've been in business here in town for 10 years. Um, everyone thought I was crazy when I moved here from the city to open up a woman's store in a town during the recession, but I took a chance, and it hasn't been easy, but we've been in business 10, it'll be 10 years, December 4th, which I'm very proud of. Um, you know, every, my, we all work very closely together. We have a great community of businesses in this town, and we all help each other out. We try to campaign the shop local. We've done, as love we said, we sponsor everything <coughs> say no so every time a little kid comes in <laughs> something but, um, but a few so I don't want to repeat what everyone else has voiced but a few things that I took away from these charts is that people are paying top dollar to move to Reading they're not paying top dollar to move to Reading to have it be filled with Home Depots and CVS and empty Rite Aid. They're coming here because they have a sense of community. There's a great library, there's great schools, and there's great things to walk around. Bookstores, there's, there's a lot that has changed in the past 10 years since we've been open. And I think that people don't realize that having a small business brings a lot of value to our town. Um, another note I had was Reading has over the years, I've heard from other people who have talked about opening town or when you know my friend Pam was opening town. Whether it's true or not, the reputation is that Reading is not a business friendly town. And I think by voting this tax, 
add, whether it's true or not, that is adding fuel to that fire, and it turns people away. Um, I know, as you said, it might not be a big increase if it's, if it's split over. I'm one of those seven businesses in um, the 666 Main Street, and he passes down every penny at any time, does not fix one thing. I mean, my husband's in there fixing light bulbs and changing things. I just spent $200 in a Home Depot this week, so no one falls down the stairs. So we might think the landlords are doing these things. They're not. And they're, so a tax might not seem like a lot on paper, but it's an awful lot to most of us getting So with that. Thank you. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just taking notes. Any other? Yes. Uh, excuse me, Carlo Baggi, 494 Main Street, uh, former owners of the Truck and Truffle. We happen to own that small commercial building, mm -hmm. and a lot of great things have been said. And uh, even to not quote, but what the assistant town manager said before she left that chat is with economic development. And Mr. Berman's presentation mentioned the boom starting in 2000, 2012, which is okay, but for business owners, we've had some of us have shared in the boom as well, but we've been burdened with from $8 to $11, now $11 to $15. We have to share the burden of the paid family leave act. We have a payroll tax increase. Um, and, and, and many of the burdens that we, and we chose to be in business. So no one should feel bad for any of us. But we may have a business to sell, some of us may have to close their business. We no longer own the chocolate truffle, thank you, it's still there. Another chocolate family bought it and it's doing well. So now they're a tenant, so I'm concerned for them as I am from everyone else in this room. So when you talk about this economic boom and real estate values, and that's great. That's great for everybody. Some, the house goes up $200,000 and they decide to sell it. They had, they had a great windfall of doing nothing just by paying their taxes and living in the town. The business owners, we have a different struggle. So everything is just another burden and a burden and a burden. And the burdens never go away in the state. So we should be ways to look for revenue not burden the small businesses. Okay, we blew the deal at Addison Wesley, a former so I can no, do that deal. No, you didn't. Okay, we blew the deal, we blew the deal with the truck billboards, we threw that money away. Okay, a former select board did that. So I'm hoping this select board is listening to all of us and will do the right thing. Not for this year, next year, just keep it the way it is. Make it a bonus, like Julie said. Make it a bonus for the businesses to come here that we don't have a split tax rate. Help the post office building attract good tenants. 8,000 square feet doesn't sound like a lot, but it is for a brand new building. And you want quality tenants. You don't want a tenant to leave in a couple of years like Portland Pie. So please take that into consideration. We're all small business owners. That are here. Most of us are here, we're very passionate. I no longer have a business in this town, but I care about everyone here. And this comes up every year for the past several years. And thankfully, it hasn't passed. No matter what amount it is, I'm not in favor of it. Even if it doesn't impact my building, I'm just not in favor of it. It's not a good policy that we should have. We want to get, we want to attract better businesses here. We have Harrow's, we have Bagel World, we have Heinz, we have Hitching Post, one of the longest standing businesses in this town. And that's what we should be encouraging and promoting. So yes, we've all had great ideas about Walgreens, but guess what, we cannot do anything like that. <coughs> Bob is correct. That happens all the time with convenience to, um, uh, pharmacies and banks. They don't want a competitor coming in, or they write it off as a loss, and that's a shame for us, like, like you guys said. So I hope you will never have a split tax rate. I'm going to talk about next year. And I, I plan to continue to own my building. My taxes are not low, and we've had all these increases. We're going to have another override. Guess what? We'll probably have another override we'll have to vote on. And then what happens then? Just keep on asking and asking. We're not trying to figure out ways to generate revenue. So why don't we stop with that? Thank you. Thank you. I'll take a couple more, and, and then I think uh, we, we need to move on. So you in the middle, and then you in the back. Hi, my name is Michelle Sabatino, and I own a hair salon called Main 565 Salon at 565 Main Street. Um, I just wanted to point out that when you drive through Wakefield, there's a lot of empty storefronts, and it looks like a dump. And if that happened in Reading, that would be really bad for all of us. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank, thank you. The woman in the back. 
Well, Michelle, that was a great <laughs> opening for me. I probably want to sell it. And I'm a realtor here in town. And Michelle, you just exact made my points that I was going to bring up. You might want to talk about, or you did talk about, how high the taxes are in other towns. However, go through the other towns and look at their centers. And a comment was made that the boom started in 2012. But let's not forget what happened in 2006, 7, 8, 9. How so many businesses went out of town. I went out of business. I will tell you, it wasn't easy for us as realtors either because nobody was selling or buying. So anything that we had made over the previous years had to survive us until the next boom came. And who knows when that's going to last for. Furthermore, look at a community like North of Reading. Go to their downtown. Want to walk around their downtown? Oh, I forgot. They don't have a downtown. <laughs> and that's why people come to Reading, because they love our downtown. And it's not by accident that the house prices have gone up so drastically <coughs> since the downtown has been refurbished. Because when we get someone from another town or a relocation, they want to know what is the town like we've been compared to walking to Andover, walking to Lexington. And when we didn't have that, when we had the dummy in the middle of town, and we didn't have nice stores. Nobody talks about me, <laughs> <laughs> And we didn't have all the nice stores, people weren't so wanting to come here. But now that they like that, it has made a boom for the residents, for our personal properties, all of us who actually live in the town, and for our commercial properties. The prices and the values have gone up. And so I say, let's keep the taxes as they are so that we can keep the businesses in town and we don't end up like Wakefield with the closed shops. Not That's it. We're going to throw it out right now. We're going to clean up our way. I can still take it. <laughs> I wrote it. 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 I just had to get it. Um, yes. Um, Michael Giacalone uh, on Ocean Park Drive. I am both a business owner in town and a resident in town. I've never been in favor of this split tax rate. Not for Reading. Uh, it's just, to me, not the type of town that should have one. Um, taking a different approach, looking at what Barry was giving us. One thing I hear from proponents for the split rate all the time is this differential in the, the rising cost of the homes versus the businesses and all that. What they fail to point out is we're talking about two different products. They have two different things, two different supply and demands. I don't want to reiterate everything else that everyone else has said, but you don't point out this part of it. The residential values of the homes reflect the supply and demand on those. The, re the values of the businesses reflect the supply and demand on those. They're two different products. What I feel like I'm hearing is we need to equalize this. We need to somehow bring something down on the residences and bring it up on the businesses to make it level. And you can't, there's disparity. Of all the people that are proponents of that, they must work at different companies, have different jobs, have different positions. Do they advocate in those companies that everybody gets paid the same thing? No, they don't, because people have different values to what they contribute to that business. It's the same thing with these values. They have different contributions to the town. They have different risks that they take on. The banks have less risks with the residences than they do with the commercial properties. People who own the commercial properties take on a tremendous risk of what happens with that business. That business can bug out of there and they still have that property and may not be able to uh, replace that tenant. So there's a lot of disparities in that. When I hear those types of arguments for a split tax rate because of the rising cost of the homes and the values changes in this, they're different products. They have disparities between them with all sorts of things which are reflected in that. So you buy a house in Reading, you're going to have that burden of that real estate tax rate. I have it, and it would only help me to have a tax shift because it would save me, what, $100 a year on my taxes? But what do you do? But what happens to my property value if, that's, if the businesses that we have in this town start to go down? 
And in terms of increasing that base, I'm a capitalist. Everybody should make as much as they can. But I also came to Reading because I like the composition of the business to the real estate. Mm -hmm. If I wanted a high commercial thing, I would have stayed in Malden and lived there. Plenty of commercial in Malden. So with that said, that is why I come here in Reading. That is why I'm against the split tax rate. I'm not looking to say, let's look at it again next year. I never want to look at it again. We're in Reading, we have this composition, and that's why we're here, so that these people with these specialty shops can survive. I don't want a Dollar Tree store coming in here in downtown. That doesn't do anything for us. I don't want a tattoo parlor coming in here, or a bait shop, or whatever you want to have. I want to have these types of people that are in here. And if you make it harder for them, then they're not going to be here. My son went to a meet and greet that Ms. Morano had when she was running for selectman and wanted to get educated to her. And she had a business owner person there with her. And that business owner said to my son, well, if they can't afford an extra couple of thousand, they shouldn't be in business anyway. Fortunately for her, that business person, it was tax season and I couldn't be in there. But we would have had a very lively discussion about that. And you can't make that determination on what a business should have and shouldn't have and what they should pay and not pay. So this is a different approach. This is something different to think about. And when you put those differences up there, make sure you distinguish next time that there's a different market, different risk factors, and different supply and demand curves for those. And maybe that'll make a different approach to what people think about the split rate. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. One, one, more, one more. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tom O'Connor, Reading Trophy. I believe all of you have my opinion. I emailed uh, have a our opinion. Um, I do think I, I don't know whether one of you took the time to uh, reply, and I appreciate that very much. But I would appreciate if all of you would take the time to read what my son so eloquently put together in the history of our company. But what I, I wanted to talk about tonight was, um, I've sat through, I've uh, served some time in the chamber in the past, and I've seen this discussion over many, many times. And obviously in my uh, not so uh, understanding of real estate way is, and being very simple was, I always thought we voted in the past whether to pass the increase the split tax or not. Last year I thought we voted not to have a split tax rate. However, up on the board, I do see that the, a split tax rate was somehow voted in. And I understand looking at it from what I've heard tonight from the, um, the person who spoke on the taxes that it was because of the seniors yes. that we had to try and uh, balance that off. In my opinion, though, once you open that door, and it seems that the door has been opened, um, I, I, I'm not sure that that, that box can be uh, closed again. And uh, the only thing for the savings, I own property in both ways, residential and commercial here, as the letter said. And I, for the savings that would be made for my property tax, I would rather uh, give that back and go back with a level tax rate because as a, a business owner, uh, I would just have to pass that along on the product that I try to sell to the many people that do uh, support us in town. So obviously, as the letter said, uh, I'm against the tax rate and um, I feel that uh, I'd like to have the opportunity to pass the business along to my son that wants to uh, be involved in it We've been very blessed in the last uh, uh, couple of months. Uh, we found out that the uh, mortgage on the building that we invested in has been paid, and he uh, has visions <coughs> of expanding and uh, uh, renovating the building downtown. But something like this, I'm sure, is going to make us take a hard look at whether we're going to consider doing that or not. I thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Okay, with that, um, I'd like to close the public hearing and open up. I should uh, take a motion. Oh. Uh, motion to, yeah. I move to adjourn, uh, motion to close the public hearing on the tax classification. Second.
All in favor or discussion? Before we do that, is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of a split? Just don't be bashful. <laughs> they ducked out a little while ago. Okay. Thank um, you. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Um, so I think before Vanessa makes her next motion, Dan um, and Vanessa, I'd like to give you an opportunity to sure. speak. Ladies first. Go ahead. All right. Uh, there was a famous uh, story, a Sherlock Holmes story. It was entitled the, uh, the Famous Case of the Dog That Didn't Bark. Did anybody notice the dog that didn't bark tonight? Not one voice raised in favor of the split. Yes. And by my count, if you count emails and people that spoke tonight, I wrote them all down. I, I counted 23 against, and one gentleman emailed us in favor, and I actually had did a brief reply to him because he thought it raised revenues. So um, I think there's been a lot said tonight <coughs> about, uh, Barry, you have raised a number of important issues, I think. Uh, and because of that disparity in how the property values are growing, we've we kind of baked in a kind of a tilt in one direction. So that would militate toward a solution of some sort, but I would argue this is not the time. And that's been raised by others tonight who spoke better than I can. Uh, the minimum wage is going up. Uh, there will be payroll deductions to pay for the new Medical Leave Act. Uh, this is just not the right time. Uh, I, th I think I would like to see this stay as close to parity as possible. I would like to see the continued support uh, of the senior tax relief. Beyond that, I'm not prepared to support any factor greater than that. Thank you, Dan. Vanessa? Bob, I'm going to go take a broad view of this, so bear with me here. Um, you know, the split tax rate gets a lot of attention um, at, at this once a year discussion, but in my view, it's only one aspect of how we as a town government affect local businesses. Um, and, and we've heard that Reading doesn't necessarily have a great reputation as far as being business friendly. Um, and I think if we want to be viewed as business friendly, um, we need to demonstrate it with more than just a once a year conversation on taxes. Um, we have the Economic Development Forum scheduled for tomorrow, uh, but that focus um, has, in, in the previous year, been on bringing businesses in, not necessarily how we support them once they're here. And I think that's an important distinction. Um, so I think we as a board need to take a commitment to take concrete steps to actively address the issues that some of these small businesses are facing. Um, some of them were very kind, and they met with me, and they let me know some of the struggles that they've faced. Uh, and I think one of the ways that we can do that is what we've discussed previously and I think need to move forward with quickly, which is establishing a new economic development committee. Um, and that, in my opinion, should have a focus on small businesses and supporting them here in town. Uh, so, I mean, I think, I think it's pretty well known. I, I believe in a split tax rate. I won't go through what, what Barry already presented. Um, that said, between the changes that are happening at the state level, um, which is placing additional financial demands on small businesses, um, what I've learned recently, thanks to the small businesses who are willing to meet with me, you know, I believe we as a town need to support them more strongly than we have historically. Um, so I would propose what would amount to a very modest split. Um, and this accomplishes a few things. It simplifies the annual discussion on the senior tax relief and how it's distributed. Um, it emphasizes to residents who, to Dan's point, may not necessarily be here, but who I heard a lot from in the past year that feel strongly about this, um, especially given we just passed an, an override. Um, and it's a small enough split that it wouldn't have a detrimental effect on local businesses. I don't know what numbers the other board members are considering. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there and we can talk about you know if we are willing to contemplate uh, a number. 
so first on the on the, uh, the hearing thank you all for coming tonight uh, I created a question in my mind something that doesn't seem to fit uh, a number of you have pointed out now we've heard this that Reading is uh, not known as a business friendly town that a number of storefronts have <coughs> been going empty over the years. Um, and, and yet, unlike many other towns, we don't really have a split tax rate. Last year we, had, we created a, a minimal one. Um, but for years we've had a one-to-one a, a, a -one tax rate between residences and businesses. And, and uh, yet we're still perceived as business unfriendly and businesses are still going out of business, et cetera. So to me, um, something, else, something else seems to be going on uh, that's not related to a split or no t split tax rate. Um, and um, so I, I wanted to s say that. Um, I, I'd like to hear more on why you think or people, Reading is perceived as a business unfriendly town because we don't currently have a split tax rate, haven't had one for years. Um, on the, the I understand, I, I met with some uh, local businesses, uh, they were gener generous enough to spend some time with me, um, and they they pointed out quite rightly that the the grand bargain is going to impose that this year is not a good year to do increase the split tax rate because the grand bargain is going to impose some burdens upon them, and and uh, they discussed the paid fam family and medical leave act, etc. I went. I just want to make a couple points on the, on the grand grand bargain um, for the general <coughs> public. Um, the, it will increase the minimum wage, which is going to be harder on businesses. But that that is not going to in, impact them all. At, uh, impact you all all at once. Next year, it's going to be phased in over a five-year period. Um, the while the taxes for the paid family medical leave program kick in on July 1st of 19, uh, 2019. And I believe the, the tax is split between the employer and employee. Um, the, the actual <coughs> family leave program, which hits businesses that have more than 25 people, um, that doesn't start till January 2021. Um, and, uh, there are some benefits to the, to the, to, I'm sorry. Um, there are some benefits to the, the grand bargain, and that is you all we, will no longer be paying um, time and a half for Sundays and holidays. That will be flattened out to the regular rate. Um, so, and, and there will be a, a tax holiday weekend for, for the business as well. So my, my point is, I heard, I heard you, um, and, I, and I know that you will be impacted next year, but it's not going to happen all next year. Uh, as you all know, um, when I campaigned and from last year, I, I do believe in the split tax rate. Um, for reasons I think that, that Barry uh, expressed better than, better than I can. Um, taxes are going up for everyone, partly due to the override, and the residences are, are getting hit um, very hard. Um, and again, I point you to Barry's presentation. Um, but I, I I'd like to open up the discussion now um, and hear other people's yeah. thoughts. Yeah, can I just? Yes. So um, I want to thank everybody who came in and, and expressed their opinion. It was done politely. 
and passionately. I know you all work hard and believe in your businesses and you invest more than just your time and your and your money, you in, you in, you invest your soul. Uh, my dad owned a small business. I worked there from the time I was in seventh grade to the time I went to college, so I, I, I get that. Um, I want to address a couple of questions, Mr. Chair, if I can, to just a, a few of the points that got made by people who brought up here. So, uh, Carlo and Michael, I'm not talking to you now. I'll talk to you later at Bud Rally's. I want to address my question to some of those, and I think, Shana, you might have been one of them. Um, I think the gentleman who owns the dry cleaner, you might have been one. There might have been one or two others. You said, I get it, it makes sense, but not now. So I would like for you, as business owners or people who represent or lend to, to, to businesses, um, when would it be now? What, is, what, would it, what would the landscape look like? What would, it need, what would need to happen for you, not Michael and Carlo, because that'll never happen, for you to come in here and say, you know what, you're right, this is the time to do a, a, a small thing. When would, when would be the right time and what were the conditions that would be conducive to do that? Because I'm really interested in hearing that because I think ultimately there will be a split tax rate, but I am incredibly sensitive to all the testimony that people gave today. But I want to know when it's right, when we'll all be on the same page. Sure, I, I, I'm, maybe I misspoke. I didn't actually say I believed in a split tax. I just thought this year was particularly hard for businesses. And I know there's some great things going on the horizon, but this is a particularly difficult year, and we should just, we should just maintain it right now. For now. Point of order. Yes, Dan. We closed the hearing. Yes, I apologize. Um, I was just asking a question yeah. to, for clarity. Yeah. Okay. Fair point, Dan. Um, the board, the, the discussion will stick to just the board. <coughs> so, Yes, may, may we make a motion to start? I would like to speak on this yes, topic. Yes, yes, yes. If I could. Yeah. You know, there's a lot has been said, and there are certain things that we have not really thought about. Um, I think what Shanna brings up is a very interesting point, is that this is not the right time. Now, and we've heard from several board members that they believe in a split tax rate. I believe in an equitable tax rate. That is my belief. And equitable is not equal. So for example, one of the things that were proposed um, in, in a bit of what Victor brought out at the very end and something that uh, Barry put into his presentation really was a change from the way that we have conducted tax planning in this town forever. We've worked with tax rates. What, there was two kind of offhanded presentations that said, no, it really shouldn't be about rate. It should really be about common tax payments. Let's try to make the payments equal. I, I fundamentally, first of all, challenge that because that is not the way that we've conducted business in this town. We've conducted business tied to a tax rate. So that's a premise I have first and foremost. Secondly, when it comes to an equitable tax rate versus a split tax rate, there, it, it is possible that at some time in the future, a split tax rate would be the most equitable tax rate for the people that run their businesses and their commercial property and who are residents here. It doesn't appear to me that that's any time soon, frankly. And you know, one of the reasons I brought up on a number of occasions <clears throat> that we need to look at, you know, if we're gonna draw comparisons with neighboring communities, we have to understand what the landscape is. And so, for example, the landscape in Wakefield is almost double the amount of commercial business. It's 14% versus seven and a half, okay? So we can compare all we want, but they don't really compare. Now, we can also show examples of how this building seems to be getting away with murder and redding and this building in Wakefield. You know, the supposition from the presentation was, see, they're paying their share. Well, you know, if they choose to do that, that's their business. They locate their business where they locate it with the understanding of what's going on. But I would bring the board's attention to another thing that I think is very important in this discussion as to when to have a serious 
consideration about split. Obviously, the, the grand bargain is up for discussion. When does it actually happen? How does it happen? How much does it cost? Who does it really affect? It will have an impact yet to be known. Here's what we know. Somebody said a little while ago, <clears throat> maybe it was you, Andy, maybe it was Barry, businesses are closing. Some businesses in Reading have closed. More will close. That is the nature of what happens in small businesses. They all don't last since 1962, okay? And, and, I, and I, we all understand that. You know, that's, you know, that's kind of a Darwinian approach to what's going on. One of the problems in Reading, we started to work on fixing five years ago. And that was a rezoning that would create a traffic pattern that would allow for these businesses to be more viable, to be in a better position. We, will ha we have either in the ground, or soon to be in the ground, over 200 units <coughs> in walking distance of these people's businesses. Give them a chance to let those people come into their businesses without putting them out of business before they get that chance. We've worked very hard, and several of us on this board have been involved from the beginning of that five years ago of rezoning into the 40R district so that what we could do was actually help the small businesses by also creating an opportunity for people to stay in Reading that might want to sell the bigger house. Um, and, you know, Tom is building something like that. Um, the gentleman that was in here earlier is creating, you know, another 65, 70 units over on Lincoln Street. Um, uh, the Sunoco station is, you know, you know, it, work is going on. It's getting ready. Uh, the EMARC building. What we're talking about here are 200 units of customers. Now, what does that mean? My guess is that's five, <coughs> 600 people that are going to be walking by these businesses that never walk by them today. <coughs> Let's give them the opportunity without strangling them to capture some of that. Let's look at this each year as we look at what's going on, but let's, by all means, we can have our various opinions about split tax, split tax rates, not split tax rates. My opinion will always be, always, that an equitable tax rate is what should be, you know, employed. And at some time in the future, that might say split. At another time, it might never say split. I, I honestly don't know. I can't forecast that. But I do know that the seeds that we have planted over the last five years have got to have the opportunity to germinate for several reasons. First of all, we know there's going to be a major increase in revenue of new construction when that happens. Secondly, we know there's going to be a major influx of excise tax because there's going to be more people living here. You know, next we know that all of these small business owners are going to have customers walking around their, their businesses. There's going to be competition for those vacant spaces. I'm convinced of that. Um, I genuinely believe in what the 40R concept's about. I would say this to you. We would send an awful message if this is the year that we decide to make a split. Whether you believe it's equitable the way I define equitable, we can agree to disagree about that. I, you know, look, I'm very respectful of that. But I honestly do believe that to split this at anything beyond 1.0075 would be folly. And I say to you all, of, to all of you on the board, and to anybody else that's listening to me, that split needs to be there because it's only fair that commercial property owners and residential property owners share a very important burden, and that is the cost of the senior tax relief. And therefore, I would support a split of 1.0075 and not one penny larger than that. And that's where my vote will be. Um, yeah, let me say one thing now. Um, uh, while I've just outed myself in the split tax rate, all I think you all know that anyway. Um, I, Victor said something uh, last year that that is stuck in my mind, and that is. Um, 
businesses don't like rapid change. Correct. Um, and so wherever we end up this evening, um, I'm very aware of, uh, I'd like to get to a larger sp split tax rate, but I, I want to do it over an extended period of time. Um, and I also want to re-emphasize the fact that I'd like to know why we're perceived. Um, I was, some businesses shared um, some of their concerns and, and why they feel Reading could be friendlier to businesses, and I'd, I'd like us to look into that. Um, and and I'd like to get hopping. I know we're all busy, but hopping on uh, a new downtown committee that could uh, try to find out other ways where, where how we can support businesses. I mean, Andy, yes. I, I mean, I think John said it best in, in terms of is Reading a business friendly town. I mean, we at great political risk and cost. But the first agenda item here was neighbors complaining about some of the way the development has impacted their lives. We at great risk and political cost um, implemented not just this board, but board you know board before us implemented the 40R so that we could put a lot of feet walking by these businesses. I can't think of a way that Reading is more business friendly than by doing that. So I agree that there are things that we could do better, but uh, you know. Uh, the notion that Reading is not open for business and Reading is not a business-friendly town. John, I can't put it any more eloquently than you just did about what this board and, and board, you know, the last board did to try to enhance um, the downtown business climate and putting 200 some odd um, new households um, who have to walk back from the train to their house and, ha and pass all those businesses. So uh, I, I'd like to just sort of maybe dispel that notion a tad while acknowledging the fact that we can probably do a little bit better job in how we run our day to day. So. Okay. Um, one last comment from Vanessa and then let's get, get down to business. So, uh, Barry, to your point, I think there's a difference between being business friendly and since how we uh, attract and entice new businesses and developments that bring in people um, that will then um, be patrons of those businesses and then how we treat those businesses once they're already here and established. And, and that's a very important difference um, because I've met with some of the business owners that are sitting in this room and that they have legitimate concerns. But I don't think that that's the issue. Uh, that's it. Well, I agree, but I, I just I want to make it clear that there is a difference between attracting businesses and how we treat the businesses once they're here um, and what we can do to go out of our way to help them and to bring in some of those business um, to bring in some of their clients. So, um, you know, Everyone has spoken. We, we have these different philosophies on the split tax rate, and I think that's fine. But I think if, if we're going to discuss a rate, that's probably something we should do now. Right. I agree. So, so I mean, John has already specified. Oh. Yeah. I, I mean, I. Well, we need to translate yeah. that into MRF. Uh, yeah. C can you tell us what the MRF would be if we use a C CIP we, shift of 1.0? Some five. The desired shift that I believe uh, yeah. John was speaking about was 1.0071. 71, I'm sorry. less than okay. three quarters of 1%. Oh, okay. The MRF is minimum residential factor is 0.9994. Okay. I, I'm just asking that to clarify yeah. what would have to go in the motion. Victor, does that, does that get us to our, um, our senior tax relief issue where we don't have to do surgery with a, 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 mi a micro scalpel. I mean, what, I mean, the, the fact of uh, trying to just try to make it. I mean, is that too low to do that? Is that? I, I, I'm just trying to understand to make this easier next year. I think you're in a position, no matter what we discuss, we're always going to have this every year. Um, we have to. I think. Setting a factor. You love it, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the bags under my eyes. Yeah. I live for this. Um, I'll come and sit with you. I, I promise we're factor, going to wrap it up. Set, discussing a factor of 1.01, which is <laughs> simply 1%, mm -hmm. alleviates all the minutia and the minuscule math that goes into it that lends itself to a much more mm -hmm. convoluted presentation. I'm, I'm doing numbers on the fly. I believe these are correct. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of effort to mm -hmm. get them right. Um, something at 1.01 1 
just alleviates right. all this, okay. splitting it down to such a fine. And the differential in the tax rate between 1.0071 and 1.01 is what, how many pennies? Okay, yeah, wait, wait a minute. I just want to you know, try to grab hold of this bus and, and, and make sure we're, we're all on the same page. Literally, page 5C14. Um, which gives the various CIP shifts uh, and uh, 1.0071 is a $14.30 commercial rate. Okay. At 1.01, 1 .01 it's 1434 So it's four cents. Okay. So, uh, I'll, I'll see. Yes. Are you uh, using an abacus? Is that why you don't want to round up? He's got his shoes. I mean, what, I, is there some, like request. you take your shoes off and stuff to make that work? Is that why it's so difficult? The fact is you have to plug it in. It's actually hard. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's not. Um, I just to remind the board um, respectfully that you don't set the tax rate the town accountant does. Right. So don't get too fixated on a penny here and there. You set the factor. She does her work right. with DOR right. and sets the actual tax rate, tax rate to the exact penny. So I just wanted to say that out loud. Thank you. Thank you. So from a, moving forward and how we vote on this, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. Um, we can go through each factor, the 1.01, 1.02, all the way up, or, or start up or down, um, or we can just have a conversation about what just we'd a, like to see. I think a conversation be, is better. And then, and then get a sense of the board. Get a sense of the board and then yeah. make a motion for that particular number. Or you can uh, start with the highest. And, and then work out again. I mean, I think a conversation might be the easier. Yeah, that's just, yeah, it's a little um, is that what the board would like to do? Yes. Yep. Have a conversation. He already said what he's. Well, so I'm, yeah. I'm with John. So I'll simplify that. So, Gary, okay. do you have a? Yeah, I mean, I think we should be higher, but I, I see no appetite for that this year. Um, well, this no, 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 I'm not, not, really, not appetite. In the I room. was looking at it yeah. broadly, um, but I want to get to the point where I don't have to, you know. Um, have to go through the mishmash on, on the senior tax relief every year. So, you know, I, I think a 1.02 gets us to that and, 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 and closes the gap a little bit in terms of some of those assessment discrepancies that we have. I know there's probably not a lot of appetite to do much more, but th that's the number where I would go with at this point. Yeah. That's okay. Thanks. So, so, do you wanna? Yeah. Um, I, I'm tending tending towards a 1.01 or 1.02. Um, look, it's it's minuscule compared to what what other towns are are paying, um, and uh, I think it's a pretty incremental uh, in, increase. And this, uh, yeah. So at the, I took the liberty of cranking out some of these numbers to see what it would actually mean for these businesses that um, Victor so painstakingly provided for us. And what it amounts to is an increase at the 1.02 between 5 and $15 a month um, for these businesses. So For the median? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so if we take, um, let's say, the building uh, Dimitri's and Dimradi's is in, there's six other businesses in there. If you average the cost of the increase over the eight businesses, it's about, it's under $10 per month. You know, so when we talk about you know, thousands of dollars of increase, you know, when we bring it down to what the actual individual business is going to be paying, it's, it's about $10 a month. Um, and, and that varies depending on the building. Christopher's is less than six per month. Um, the CVS is uh, in that building is about fourteen dollars a month after one point oh two. And that's over the whole building, or is that under individual? Uh, no, that's per average per business. So, so you divide it by the four businesses okay. at one point oh two. It's one hundred. Assuming they're all paying the same rate, <laughs> they may not. Yeah, be I mean these are ballparks, right? So they're averages. So, so you did a lot of calculations on what the business would pay. Mm -hmm. What is the savings in your proposal at? that number to the average or to the median homeowner. Uh, I didn't calculate. I think, I think there, it's fair to do that. Isn't I mean, that on your, right John, it's, it's right here. $18. $18 per year? Huh? Yeah. Per year. Per year. Per year. Uh, well, 18 this year. Yeah. $18. Yeah. And there's a multiple on a monthly basis to the business owner. I mean, but, uh, but wait, look, John, but the, John, let me say something. I think it, it, it doesn't take into account that difference um, <clears throat> that the median business 
is valued higher than the No, she's home. she actually took a sample building. Okay? A sample building yeah. at the valuation. Mm -hmm. So it's not <coughs> like an average bringing, you know, the twenty four million dollar home depot property in with you no, know I right. Right. I, am I Probably, yeah, I didn't look at the home depot. I didn't think you did. I thought what but you did. I, and I thought and I and I actually think that's a good idea to look at it that way. I think there's a certain messaging that goes on here. And the reason I came up with the number I came up with, Victor provided a number that said, this is parity. And, I, and, and the reason I've suggested that, and I'm not trying to be a jerk about this, not only does that address the parity issue of the senior tax relief, it also sends a message to all of those business owners that came here tonight and to anybody that might be looking at an empty storefront and to all of those developers of in the 40R that are gonna need to be marketing. I, I just think that if we spend at least this year splitting to a, to a parity number on the senior tax, it's a message that lets the 40R guys get a chance to market. It lets the people that came here get closer to their foot traffic, you know, without spending more money. I just think it's a strong message, and that's the reason I'm so supportive of, uh, you know, and Victor, I kid you about, you know, 1.1 uh, versus, you know, one, you know, one, you know what I'm saying. I mean, uh, look, you can do this stuff in your sleep, and I know it. Um, so, you know, you're going to have to spare me that. How much simpler this is going to be if it's not point. Zero zero seven one. Right. I mean, uh, I know you better than that. Yeah. So that's kind of my point. Right. Is it's it's messaging. It's not. Okay. It's less about the the number, although the number to the resident to the resident that oh, is it really is, small. Is so um, so. But I, I think the the message. Look, <laughs> we represent um, well over twenty thousand residents. Um, um, many of whom are homeowners, and um, th they are not here tonight. But we still need to represent them. And um, I, you know, I, I I heard over and over again when we were pushing the override. Residences are getting slammed. Victor keeps evaluating their properties at unbelievably high rates. Eight hundred bucks. Yeah, no, um, no. Seriously, I, they, they, some of them have been sharing their their tax bills increases with me, and they're 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 getting slammed. So, to me, the messaging also needs to be to the residents. But what is the impact uh, of their balance sheet, Andy? I mean, their balance Smith, sheet. Yeah, Barry, one. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, John, you brought up the question of equ what's equitable, and, and unless I, I mis, mis uh, read uh, Victor's comments, you said that basically because Reading is 8% commercial, uh, I'm sorry, 8%, yeah, 8% commercial property, 92% residential, in order to maintain sort of a tax levy of a 92 to 8, the factor should be at closer to 105. Did I? Did, right? Yeah, we're technically at 92.6. Right. So really, to, 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 to be equitable, just in terms of residential, so now we want to shift from common rates to common tax payments because that's what this really is. That's what he's no, supposed we to talked about. We talked about tax equity, right? So I'm just I'm just, I'm just asking the question. So so if you go if you look at it from that point, it should it, you know it should be at 105. I don't think anybody here is talking about 105. I just wanted to understand what the correct what in order to you know to to look at it in terms of an equitable way, commercial property versus residential property, that all the math boils down to a 1.05. I don't think anybody's suggesting that we go there. So I, I know we've had this, we've, there are different philosophies. I think, John, to your point, uh, as far as messaging, that's why when I first talked about this, that's why I think the Economic Development Committee is so important. Because part of our commitment to businesses has to be about more than the split tax rate. So that's item one. I, mean, I think at this point, we're in agreement that we're in disagreement. Um, so can we go back to considering a number? 1.02 yeah, yeah. has like been brought out. Yeah. I, I so I'm, I'm, make, 
unless someone else wants to throw out a different number for consideration. No. Turn that into MRF, that'd be point yeah. nine nine eight. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, can I suggest that we start at the lowest number and no, work our way up? That's not the right way to go. Yeah, okay, Vanessa, okay. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you, Vanessa. Uh, move that the select board adopt a residential factor of 1.02 for fiscal year 2019. That's the wrong number. Wrong number. Yeah, you got to put the MRF in. Yeah. Okay. Can I? You would, yeah. you would achieve a 1.02. 1 .02. <laughs> the motion would be to adopt the minimum residential factor of 0.9984. Say that again. Mm -hmm. The minimum residential factor mm -hmm. would be 0.9984. That is technically what you would adopt yeah. to Thank yield you. that adult. Okay. Uh, move that the select board adopt a residential factor of 0 0.9984 for fiscal year 2019. Second, uh, someone? Oh, second. Thank you. Um, discussion. Yes, Dan. I guess I'm just missing something here. Uh, when we put the override question before people, I do not recall hearing a hue and cry that they were going to be unhappy with the amount of taxes they were going to be paying, the people that were for it. I heard no discussion at all about putting it onto the commercial people. So I'm really not understanding why three of my compatriots here, almost as an article of faith, are saying we have to split this thing and we have to split it now and in, I'm talking Barry and in a significant way again my number is 23 to 1 those people could have sent us an email if they felt passionately about this I didn't I saw people that sent it last time didn't send it this time okay I don't get it can, can someone explain it to me why this has become a religion with you guys? Oh, I, I, Dan, right, that, that's yeah, it is uh, almost. All right, no, uh, yeah. I, uh, Dan, it came up a lot during the override debate. A um, lot. I don't recall. We 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 each have. Um, well, no, our, that's a fair question. Own. That's a fair question. What, what, to, to to explain religion, your philosophy of why uh, this uh, is such an article Dan, of necessity. You, you can't term it as a religion. Please. Why is it such an article of necessity? Let me rephrase it. Can I? Yes. Please. Um, Enlighten me. So, Dan, I think it is a fair question. Um, yeah. And I think it's a philosophical difference, you know, because the same could be said um, to the argument of why it should remain the same. There, there are pros and cons to each of these options, whether we keep it at, um, at par or whether we shift it slightly. Um, and. I think that's it. I think it's simply a philosophical difference. Yeah, and you're disregarding 23 people who spoke for sent emails. W Wakefield, Wakefield says we're going to, to to the maximum we can to protect homeowners, yeah. and have done that traditionally. And you've heard of uh, what's right, going on right. there. They also, yeah, there's also a lot of good things happening at our friends at Wakefield. Reading has taken the opposite tack and said we are going to we are going to we are going to protect businesses, and we will have a, a factor of of one. Everything else is in the middle. I presented information and data that basically showed that over the last nine, 10 years, that the average tax bill on homeowners is rising significantly faster than the, than the tax yeah. bill. And so having a small shift basically tries to rein that in a little bit. It's not about a religion. It's not about a philosophy. It's about reacting to data that we get presented on a daily basis. Well, why, For the your, what, why not wait a year, Barry? I think to Barry's I, point, I, when I, is the right year? Well, that's what the question I, I asked. Don't, I don't that think what, it's not. <laughs> so that was the question that I asked maybe un, un, unfairly as Shane or maybe some of the other and, people. And, and but I, I asked the you, question you about- You raised great points. Not, what yeah. what will it what will it look like? I mean, John probably answered it a little bit. Let there be more foot traffic going yeah. in front of the stores. Okay, so that might necessitate at that point when things are going well. Maybe that's the 105 to 1.1, 1 .1, right? Um, uh, tax rate. Or maybe at the point we get to 10 percent. Somebody raised that. Maybe, so, maybe, maybe not. so being at 1.02. I mean, that is like that, I mean, we're talking literally pennies. Um, that, so I hope I answered the question. I'd like. So I, I, right. I, I think Dan, you know, the concern here is in helping our businesses, in supporting our businesses. Um, I, I think we can do more for them in other ways that are more meaningful as a board. Such as. Than establishing the economic development committee. To do what? To start. What was that? To do what? 
So uh, you, you talk about the EDC, but what do you want it to do for the businesses? To well, that's to a, I feel like that's a separate agenda item, but. I've, like I said, I've spoken to many of the business, or not many. I've spoken to some of the ha to some of the business owners that are here and or work here. We're using them now, um, and they have suggestions on ways we can be friendlier. And so, at a future date, right. I think it would be great to discuss how sure. we can do that. Oh, I, no uh, objection. Yeah. But you have to do this to it. Right. But, <laughs> I, but I think as far as the split tax rate, the the emphasis has been on the businesses, and residents are affected as well. I mean, to John's point, it's not a significant amount. Um, no. But there are individuals in this town, especially following the override, that will benefit. And so even though it may seem like a small amount to some people, it could still make a difference for others. Um, and here I'm thinking about our seniors that are more vulnerable in the community. So, you know, I, I think this is a very small split. I think it's the right direction to go. Uh, I'm sensitive to the concerns of the businesses, and I want to support them in other ways. But I, I support the 1.02. Um, I'd like to wrap this up because we seem to be re repeating ourselves a little bit. Um, so, uh, can I make an amendment, please? Yes, you may. I would like to uh, amend the residential factor to 0.9994 which would uh, represent a uh, CIP shift of 1.0071. That's a separate motion. That, that's an yeah, amendment. That's an amendment. So we... Uh, so you can vote on the amendment um, up yeah. or down. So um, I'd like a very quick discussion on the amendment. You need a second. I'll second. Okay. Thank you. And second. Thank you. Oh, I think we've made our... I fully decision. support that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it's a much more measured response yeah. to speak. I understand. Yeah. I, I, I apologize a little bit for the tone earlier. That's but, fine. Yeah. I, I respect your, your views. I, I think we just have some different views. So, um, so a no vote on so the amendment. would leave your would point leave point the original amendment. So all in but I would add, yes. we're holding an economic development forum tomorrow. Yes. Got to look some people in the eye if you vote. Oh, I, I, you got, I, yeah, you're going to look been, them right in the eye. Looking them in the eye, in the eye right all now. night. Well, <laughs> and and the eye. I got, I'm going to be going into their, some of their stores with a hood on. Um, don't, don't bring a mask and a gun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you had to go there, John. You just had to go there. You can, um, you can wait a year, guys. So, so a chance. yeah, uh, vote on the amendment, um, Dan's amendment. Um, uh, all in favor? All opposed? Back to the original uh, proposal. Um, I'd like to close discussion and take a vote on the one point. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. No, no, point nine nine eight four. I almost made the same mistake. Um, right. All in Correct. favor of Vanessa's proposed amendment of uh, 9984. The original motion. The original motion. I just want to make it clear. Which represents a 1.02. 1. 1. 1. Yes. Yep. Um, all in favor? Raise your hand. All opposed? Okay. Thank you. Th thank you for the congenial tone, even though we <laughs> are far, far apart. It wasn't too bad. Um, so, yeah, thank you, people, for coming. Um, what was that? The score is 48 to 2. Still 48 more percent left on the table. It's over my head. They don't catch up. Vanessa, um, you have another motion methods. make? Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we have to show you on the easy stuff first. Yeah. Well, we uh, said. So we have motions regarding the open space discount, the residential exemption, and the commercial exemption. Uh, I'm going to label all of these as uh, not to grant. Mm -hmm. These? Not uh, grant or not. Very, uh, very. Yeah. We're okay. still voting. I know. I'm listening. Just remember. There have to be separate motions on each one. I think he knows yes. how to spell your name. Uh, <laughs> okay. Move that the select board not grant an open space discount for fiscal year 2019. S second. Uh, discussion. Um, we've never done it. There's no case for it. Uh, 
Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, move that the select board not adopt a residential exemption <coughs> for fiscal year 2019. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Move that the select board not grant a commercial exemption for fiscal year 2019. Second. All in favor? Or discussion? Sorry. Yeah. So read that one again, please. Uh, move that the select board not grant a commercial exemption for fiscal year 2019. I, you know, are we in discussion on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, look, we're, we've taken the door is open. Okay, the door has now been open to a split. I think you have to put that in. I, my opinion is there's going to be a very small amount of businesses that can qualify for it, but we ought to allow it. We ought to make it part of our policy. I, I have considered this, John, um, and I, my, my concern with it is that because it only applies, because of, as, as our assessor had noticed, had mentioned, the restrictions are so severe yeah. that mm -hmm. there are going to be the very few that qualify yes. um, for that, and all of the other small businesses will not be able to benefit from. And one other thing, if I may, mm -hmm. due to the mechanics of the exemption, mm -hmm. technically you are raising the taxes on the other commercial <coughs> properties to pay for the exemption. Which would then call for a split in the other direction for parity, just exactly the way we're doing it and then with the seniors. Because this should be all reading. We've always talked about this. You know, if we put this exemption in and allow some businesses to save some money, this board has just opened the door to a split commercial tax rate that does not have anything to do with the parity number. That has been done by this board. Okay, uh, now yeah. let's f disregard how much it's been done. Mm -hmm. The number that this board has just approved by, by a three to two vote mm -hmm. has now created a split commercial tax rate that is going to cost businesses money. Why would we not offer, even though it's to a, a few small businesses, the opportunity to save money? I, I will move to amend the motion to state grant instead of not grant. I'm making a motion for an okay, amendment. So discussion on the on the amendment. Or any wait, second? Wait, wait. So second. Second. Okay. 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 So Victor, I thought when we did this last year, you, didn't you mention that there wouldn't be anybody that's going to qualify? There might be one or two if I were to review the records. However, to go ahead with that motion will effectively delay classification oh. as yeah. I recalculate all the numbers that have been calculated you know what? to accommodate for a second commercial tax rate on top of the one that we have. Yes. If we can, this is if we right. can identify so, it. So in that case, John, I actually think that that is a good point that you brought up, but since we're late in the game. Yeah, I'll that, withdraw the motion. That maybe what we do, Victor, is you look to see like, you know, is there anybody? And then when we come back next year and do this, then well, to do it Well, the really? last time we had this discussion, there was as many as 10 businesses. That's what you reported to us. I, I'm very clear in my memory of it. All right, okay. After these, I'm not joking. And, and if 10 of those, 10 of those businesses we're in here tonight. Yeah. I would. I. But I, would look I, I want to look them in the well, face. The, the, the amendment is is been withdrawn, John. So, um, but that oh, said, I, I do only because of what he said. Yeah, yeah, I do see your point, and it's a good one. But uh, I, f based on what Victor said and the withdrawal of the motion, we need we need to move on. Well, I I totally disagree with that rationale. Okay. I totally disagree with it. Um, I think that the fact that we're creating more work for staff by doing, by protecting these businesses is immaterial to me in this discussion. <coughs> Furthermore, if this takes us an extra two weeks instead of an extra two days, two weeks, <coughs> that's the way I look at this. I understand. So, a vote on the original motion. Uh, all in favor? Wait, what, what's so the, the original? I'll, I'll not grant. Um, move that the selection <coughs> not, not grant a commercial exemption for fiscal year 2019. On favor? All opposed? Uh, I that those are all my motions. Okay. Um, uh, we're doing uh, 
pretty good, Victor. Do you have a <coughs> headache yet? No, I don't. Need some Advil? No. Oh, no. I have 20 minutes. <laughs> Other remedies. Uh. I, I know you think we're high maintenance. The martinis I, I, in Wakefield. I get that. <laughs> yeah, and, and Wakefield's not the only place they Demon can make martinis. Demon gym. So. Demon gym. Demon gym. Demon gym. Demon gym. Demon gym. Demon gym. Demon Before we adjourn, yep. um, Thank you. I, I want to do two, two quick things. Um, one is I put together a table of our, listing our goals for the mm -hmm. fiscal year, select board goals, and it's in your packet. And um, the idea was to um, put it up on our web page so everybody knows what this select board is aiming to, shooting for, to accomplish. Um, so that's on our agenda now? Yeah. yeah it's, it's on... Um, Bob has the original Excel. It'll <coughs> print out more nicely. Um, yeah. trying to find yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, the, uh, no. Yeah, so, like, what page? Like, on the power? On the so, it's after the... Was it after or before the discussion? Task discussion. It's going to be right here. Bingo. It should be after. Oh, is it five to, uh, uh, page 38 on the? 5D1, one yeah. 5D2. Okay, getting there. Like 38, 39 the oh, the I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. What happened to it? I don't got it. Okay, so everybody see that? It's just three columns. Mm -hmm. The goal, um, select board policy where we're working on the communication of volunteers that's split up between four members uh two of the members are in the lead currently but that that's going to change mm -hmm. capital projects uh is another one sale of the oakland road property i understand john that that may not be the best way to describe it. Maybe disposition. It was more the, was it the <coughs> disposition. I think the utilization of the asset. Utilization. At, oh, yeah. yeah, okay. At or at, or at, um, Oakland Road. Because we don't know. Right. It's all right. part of the capital. Stuff. So okay. utilization yeah. of Oakland Road property. It may or may not be a sale. Yeah. Right. Okay. Could Bob, very well be a sale and it I'll might be a development. You, would you make that change? Yeah. Thanks. Um, housing trusts, that's uh, Barry and I will yep. get working on it too. New EDC. <coughs> Um, oh, Barry and, and Dan. Um, that was us? That, okay. That's you. Uh, um, although after, after tonight, I would like to be part of that. Well, I think it's going to, I think, yeah. I was going to say, if anyone wants to give, you know, I'd be interested in a new EDC. Uh, yeah. You can have it. Okay, I will take, take it. Me I will take that's take me Why'd you give it to her? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Because um, she asked for it. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> And nicely too. And then, the, and then the, the last column is progress, which is, um, which I'll rig with Bob. So it's. A, right. I, I can give a very uh, quick update oh, oh, to the. Can I suggest a quarterly uh, report on each of these? Yeah, uh, yeah. I know, I know you requested that, but um, these subcommittees are meeting. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to see us on every single agenda. Is what I'm getting at. I don't think that's a productive way to do this. Um, it's if you want I, I see it more like a standing item that sometimes it's going to be used like for instance there's a, a license permits and approvals and things yeah, like that sure. we don't um, it just it gives us it posts it that way if people come up and have some progress right. and want to report um, I, I have a very quick update yes <laughs> so how do you all feel sorry about uh, well putting that on the our, this as long as that's website. that's the sense of it I'm, I'm okay yeah. with that yeah I mean if we have nothing to report we yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. And and this select board goal uh, table, is it okay if it goes up on the website? Sure. For, for, for people to see. Yeah. Um, Vanessa, and so Barry and yeah. I met um, a few weeks ago um, to discuss the policy regarding email response. Uh, we'll, we have some suggestions there. It's a little late, so I'm happy to table it. Um, we've been in one of the items that we think needs to be advertised more broadly, maybe we continuously mention it here at the meeting, is the C-Click Fix mm -hmm. app for your phone, so you can download it. Um, the There needs to be a social media subcommittee, perhaps separate from the communication subcommittee, uh, because the board, if this is a direction we want to move forward with, uh, with a Facebook page, we need to decide who will serve on the subcommittee, who writes the posts, etc. 
Um, so that's something the board as a whole will need to decide. Um, and we need to create a select board social media policy. I know, Dan, you provided one, so. Um, yeah, you should take a look at that. Play, yeah. Plain bill. Yeah. Yeah. Same plan. Yeah. Um, so we can, we can use that as a template moving forward. Uh, that's all. And then um, we have future meetings on the agenda, uh, on the calendar um, for that's a committee as well as John and myself and the capital projects. Okay. Uh, last thing, I, I just want to hear input on the agenda. No. The addition that Mary and I requested, uh, Bob's contract uh, for the third. Uh, well, if both of you request it, then it goes on the agenda. Yeah. Um, and so we have the doctor designer selection law, mm -hmm. uh, uh, several hearings on on second driveways curb cuts, um, cable, cable. That's an advertised hearing. Yeah, I, I did promise HRAC that we would take up their advice and discuss it on question three. Um, so let me just jump these down. So we had addition of HRAC question three. <coughs> yeah, management contract. So far. okay, thanks. And, and I would. <laughs> Um, I would like to get back to the public on the stakeholders meeting um, with our thoughts on that and perhaps next step steps uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a lengthy discussion but uh, yeah I, I'd like to get that into but we'll just let's discuss the Dan, do you know how, how, much, how, just how much time you think you would need on the, the Comcast uh, I would say that can be done in 30 minutes, maybe 40. And no more okay. than that, yeah. Okay. I mean, there's, it's really a question of how many, many questions are you guys going to have. Okay. And, and, the, and the hearings on the, on the, road, uh, on the curb cuts is probably short. Those should be 10 yeah. 15. I mean, is there any controversy with them? We don't know because we haven't had, okay. uh, if I heard from you about it. It can go very fast. Okay. John? Uh, there's an item not on there that is likely to surface, mm -hmm. and it's timely. And that is that the um, Reading Little League softball organization yes. has prepared to make a gift um, down at Sturgis Park. Uh -huh. And they are feverishly preparing the formal proposal for a look from engineering, from DPW, and, you know, and it's really those are the two areas. A courtesy call to, you know, to show the chair of recreation what's being presented. Yep. <coughs> that project is on the capital plan at $50,000. Mm -hmm. These guys are ready to step up and Perfect. make a gift. They're able through a variety of in-kind help mm -hmm. to get it done for a lot less than that. And they've got the funds to finish. They really are interested in the two-phase project, but this is phase one, which is really kind of backstop dugouts all safety stuff yep. you know fixing some damage fencing down there at yep. the basketball court and also at the tennis court um, their hope is to get acceptance of their gift yeah and get in the ground <laughs> before the snow flies they'd like to get it done and I think they can they've got a good plan yep. they're feverishly as I said, Obviously, if a formal proposal can't be put in the hands of Bob to be shared with the town engineer, then this is a moot point. But I'd like to reserve ten minute, five to ten minutes in that October 30th meeting, if possible, sure. if they're if they're ready. Yep. It's a if it's, ready. it's a quite a gift. Yep. Yeah, it is. You know, quite from a, a private organization to something that is. On our capital plan, yeah, at a cost. I think Bob wasn't it of about fifty thousand. Uh, depends what they're doing to tennis and basketball. It could be significantly more if they're really going to fix both those up. Well, they're going to fix. The backstop alone has got to be fifty. The, and then in, the in our in our in municipal world, the backstop yeah, is fifty. Yeah, right. so they're going to put dugouts like what was done at the high school baseball field mm -hmm. for safety purposes, and the backstop, and they want to do some repair work so that you know the basketball court i mean if you were down, if you went down there you'd see what i'm talking yes, about I hear the you. basketball court has been there, there's one wall they're, they're probably going to go into this when they they will yeah, yeah. yeah, so. yeah. I mean, what i'm saying to you is let's reserve a little time because if they can get if we if it's something everybody chooses to do that's a big savings to the town yeah they right. can get it 
they think that they can get it done before the snow flies, which would be mm, wow. yes. huge. Well, 10, 15 minutes, I mean, that's a short. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm just fine. queuing you up for that in yeah. case. That's fine. Uh, was that a question or yes, you'll, you know. Question. Okay. I'm not going to let the question. I feel okay. obligated to ask it, though. Uh, I've got two sets of professional opinions on ballot question one, if the board wants to hear those. On sure. ballot question one. <coughs> yes. I've heard from MMA and from uh, my uh -huh. our health insurance. And that has a direct impact on us. If your discussion, I will, right. but it's up to you. That's, that's a very consequential question. Yeah, yeah. I can't give you a lot of analysis oh, because boy. it's not possible. Yeah. I can just share a couple of letters I got. Leave it up to the board to, to work. Do anything or do nothing. Um, one other question. It may not be for this particular one, but um, <clears throat> I, I, you know, um, I, I, Alberti told me that our, what is the, all the initials for the traffic? Oh, PTTTF. PTTTF. Um, looked at favorably the idea of the flashing signals at Cape Cod and uh, yes and we I can't remember if I've updated the board but we learned that the technology is now legal to use yes you did you did send us that okay. yeah um, so I mean we could pick the one up off the ground and put it back up which <laughs> is good that's been picked up, down yeah. by Dunkin Donuts and so that was the thing we talked about the library Yep. crossing I call it yep. you know at Cape yep. Cod and uh, and Bancroft um, yeah, and our, our two reps are scrambling for fun so maybe yeah some so you know okay uh, I'll for you the, Andy, on all this yeah yes yes and, and we could start earlier and um, okay one thing at a time uh, John's Proposal to discuss a, the gift. I think it's great. Um, I think it's great. It just would Vanessa and Dan be, give a courtesy call to the uh, recreation uh, chair so they they're they are kept in the loop. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so that we're that we're talking about it when do we slot it for a meeting? Um, I'll work with Andy on time. Okay. Is, is it going to be on the 30th? Just so we're, just so we're clear, it's not about trying to go around them. No, 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 no. Because yep. what they do, this is really infrastructure. Yep. Have they voted on it yet? No, they wouldn't vote on it. It's this. not clear they need to. It's, it's not clear they would vote on this at all, Dan. They, they actually get the presentation, though. It's a, yeah. They do the courtesy. They did the same thing for the patty. Yeah. Well, the, the problem is they're not meeting this month. Yeah. We can invite them to come to the meeting. Yes, yeah. exactly. We could do yeah, that. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Excellent Great. idea. Okay. okay. Good idea. So, um, so we have that. We have um, we've got the H rack. We got the H rack Christian recommendation three. question three. Um, and and I'd, I'd like to really respond to the stakeholders uh, meeting, especially. Um, so it's a, it's. I'll try. We'll try to fit everything in. I, obviously, the the, the ten minute uh, gift. Uh, if the, you know, given that the ground could freeze up. Um, that's got Mr. Be Chairman, I, I don't mean any disrespect with yeah. nope. what I'm about to say, but <laughs> yes. I have noticed that our agenda is starting to fill up with a lot of stuff that we haven't traditionally yep. gotten involved in. Yep. I, I, I would urge I you, hear you to try to you know, pair that back a bit. I'm aware of, I'm aware of that. Okay. Um, and I was just thinking about it today. Okay. Uh, I have committed to Bob that this weekend I will go through the next, up through a, April mm -hmm. uh, agendas and, and work on the skeleton of those agendas and that we can then build on later. But there are certain things that need to go in at certain times. Um, and right. Bob, Bob and I will work on that. Good. Um, okay. okay. Any, any other uh, recommendations? All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you for coming. Okay, thanks.